Hello and welcome to Cold Hard Witch. We are Lawful Stupid RPG and we're thrilled to have you join us while we play through Rime of the Frostbitten module with some additions sprinkled in, just like you do on Biscuits, Delphi. My name is Buddy and I'm the DM of this adventure. The, the votes on my trifling DM nickname have been stolen and I suspect Ryan is behind it. Uh, let's see who we have here tonight, shall we? <laughs> tonight we have Rodney playing Flynn, the Psy Warrior Fighter. Madeline playing Zalvana, our devilish Asimar Bard. Pike playing Professor Reginald, our human warlock. And Evadaris guest starring as Luca, the mysterious one. <laughs> Unfortunately, Fariel and Delphinus players are unable to join us tonight. How is everybody? Great. Great. Good. Awesome. I'm trying to plan out ascending to a sea monster. <laughs> God, isn't it always the way? When we last left our party... They had had some heated discussions on what to do next. Are they making the deal with the Durgar or just buckling down and going to war? Or are they just deucing out and saying sorry about it? Uh, as they headed to the Wolf's Pelt Inn for a drink, a snack, and a rest, they made the unfortunate discovery that probably 60 to 70% of the town guard had just up and left their post. They were, presumably, the mercenary guards owned by the Speaker, but even those swords would have been beneficial against the Durgar. They began the process of onboarding some of the locals and figuring out who can make decisions for the town in the absence of a Speaker. And now, friends, let us rejoin our party, who have all gotten the benefit of a long rest. Huzzah. So make sure that you click that long rest button in D&D &D uh, It is obvious, however that uh, Delphina is still feeling out of sorts, <laughs> shall we say, from her introduction to a rather large amount of whisk tea last night. Um, it is currently around 10 in the morning, and uh, you're all waking up, except for the professor who never sleeps anymore. Weird. Hashtag weird. Um, and so uh, just because... Madeline has not uh, has not been with us. Uh, she's been doing some other exciting things. Luca, why don't you uh, why don't you give us a, a description of freshly woken up from a good night's sleep? Exactly what she's going to see in in one of the cots in the room there. So in one of the corner cots, you see this guy in a black coat pulled in tight. He's got one eye open so you see his hazel colored um there with fire still brimming from it full of energy um his hair is kind of matted up because he's been leaning on the the wall to rest his head as with his eye open um he's humanoid he's got a nice full black beard um, kind of think of like Tormund Giantsbane from Game of Thrones uh, just with black hair. And that's kind of what Luca's given the vibe off of. Though I will say that you go and you check the bottom of your shoes to see if maybe you've tracked something in from the outside. But it doesn't seem to be coming from your shoes. It seems to be coming from the corner in which Luca is in. He's a, a rather unfortunate smelling you Adventure. did find me at the end of the jail cell, right beside the, uh, mm. the facilities. So some yes. stank lingered. That's true. That's true. Lingering stank. Yeah. Lingering stank. Okay, that's a potential title. Ah. <laughs> um. Okay, so you are uh, you're all awake, and you're still kind of in the the room in which you slept, and the professor creepily stared at all of you all night. Um, um, I would like to send that sending in the middle of the night if I can. Oh, okay. Sure. What, uh, why don't you tell me, tell me what the send is? Uh, I'm going to contact the, uh, Freddy the sea monster. And, uh, say, uh, uh Freddy, this is, uh, Professor Reginald. We could use your assistance in... Targos. Uh, we, we will compensate you for your time, uh, but uh, details to be discussed upon arrival. 
Um, you will get back as the response. Uh, 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 who, uh, who, who, uh, who is this? Uh, uh, pr professor? Are, can you swim? What, what is, what is Targos? I would like, I would gladly, and it kind of, let's say that he has run out of his 25 at that point. Okay. Would you like to burn another 25 to another third level spell to, uh. Yeah, <laughs> to let's send see to him if I can again. Get that map back out and give him some directions. <laughs> this would be presumably before you have recovered them in your long rest. Oh yeah. Well, because I mean, I can I, get them back on a short rest. So. I, I do that in other games too. It's like, oh, it's it's end of the night. All right, I'm going to send five sending messages. Oh yeah, I mean, they're sleeping for eight hours. I can, I can. I can take seven short rests, and while they take one long rest, I can you, send people messages all night long. You can watch the Fellowship of the Ring Extended Edition. Yeah, he probably has. All right, uh, so response <laughs> to Freddy, I will say, uh, follow the shoreline uh, away from Bremen. The next, the next city you come to will be Targos. Um, we could use your assistance. Uh, I don't know how to pay you, but we can discuss that when you arrive. Yes, uh, we'll look for you in the harbor. Follow the shoreline away from Bremen. Uh, yes, and I, I love fish. You could pay me with fish. Are there fish? I love to eat fish. And then it's just kind of a digression of his love of fish. <laughs> just love uh, fish. It seems to be have been successful, though. Um, OK, as long as he follows the shoreline in the correct direction. <laughs> well, and as long as he doesn't get messed up by the river, the Shansi River that is between here and there, right, where right. you all had the yeah. encounter with the bridge. Um, uh, but hey, you know, he's a sea monster. He must be smart, right? Yeah. How smart is he? <laughs> Um, and yeah, I'll spend the rest of the night taking notes and describing those rituals and things like that. Okay. So now we're at the, everyone's waking up from long rest points. Um, what would you all like to do and or say to each other? <laughs> oh, uh, Flynn, uh, I... I did notice that this rapier that the uh, the former speaker was using is uh, quite nice and uh, might go well with uh, the ones that you are currently using. And I'll hand you that plus one rapier. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, I'll take like I'll do like my morning routine to take the plus one from. So that takes an hour, I believe. If you look, uh, it's in the handouts. It's called the Anderson Stone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe it takes, it's in party loot. Yeah, it's a, so it's an hour of concentration. Okay. Ow! <laughs> Had a cat try to jump up on my desk. Uh, <laughs> he missed. I, I was I was imagining <laughs> that that Flynn was like holding uh, holding the stone in there to transfer the goodness and like cut himself. <laughs> He's like ah 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 ow so sharp. <laughs> this is your fighter, everyone. He cut himself <laughs> on his own sword. Uh, so do you want to commit some time to doing that this morning? Yeah, that'll be my my, uh, my morning ritual. Okay, before breakfast and everything. Yep. Okay. What about the rest of you, Zalvana? Your um, the Delphi's. She is she's awake and in and out of consciousness, and she feels like her head is this fucking big, and she's oh. asking all of you why you're yelling. Um, <laughs> the uh, the 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 three women that you had been caring for, and uh, in fact also Valin, uh, who had been uh, throwing that fireball around uh, they are they're, they're, they've gotten up and their beds are made and they're not in the room with you guys okay. um, well I'm going to go downstairs and get Delphi some tea okay yeah it's all one floor but yeah you can go out into the or, main room and, and okay. yeah. sor source her a little something to 
to ease the uh, yeah the pain. I'll just tell her to keep your head on the on the pillow and try to relax. The pillow. And stop yelling. Pillow so <laughs> cool. It's so cold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you things are better than that cold pillow when you're hungover. Oh my god. <laughs> not that <laughs> I would know about that. Uh, no, not at all. Uh, how about Luca? Uh, Luca would kind of scratch his head, deal with the uh, the matted hair that he's wound up with. Mm. Does anybody have a map of town? I don't. Thought you're the one that did have the map. I had a map of the Dale, not of town. Do we have an actual physical map? Uh, you don't. I I have been popping the one and roll twenty up for you, which I I am happy to do. You guys will say that you've made enough notes. Uh, this is one of my weird side rants about roll twenty and how we don't create our own maps to have in our player stuff anymore. Um. Let me get you guys switched over to that. Um, I have, you will probably notice, I have added a an area at the top. Uh, something we had discussed before. The, uh, the harbor is, is ice locked. And so they have built a, um, they, they've gone out to where the actual liquid water is and built what they call the ice dock and they have put up some docks and that's where the ships come in and out of and then they will just um kind of walk you know along the ice here to bring things from the ships into the actual town the fish and any supplies that they that they get uh don't don't use that scale because those ships are like 200 feet long if you try to scale them out uh, it's, it's just it's Damn. it's just some assets that I had that I put together quickly, um, but since I knew you guys were talking about trying to do something with the Durgar in the ice, I wanted you to have an, an understanding of where the ice and then where the liquid water was. Heard. So there you go, Luca. All right, I I'm gonna look at the map and then. All right. Oh, I'll be back. Don't do anything super dumb without me. It doesn't fucking matter. You're going to do something dumb either way. Where are you uh, going? I'm going to look around. And then I'm going to leave and I'm going to go walk around town for however long it's going to take. See, uh, using my, my history, try mm-hmm. to figure out points they may use. And other things that I need to know for other reasons that we talked about. Uh, things that you're going to look for, like places the Durgar might be able to exploit. They can exploit and various routes. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we'll say that you're you're having a little bit of a walkabout and gathering that. Um, Flynn is working on... Moving that bonus over, uh, Zalvana, you have uh, Theobald has made you some, or has made Delphina some, some tea and and given her a, just a a little bit of food to maybe soak up some of that liquor that's probably still inside her. And so you're you're tending to her, and she's she's still kind of in a bad way, hungover, but she's feeling a, a little better that, or she's at least putting on the airs of feeling better. Uh, Professor. Yes. Anything? Anything else? Um, I'm looking at these keys that we got. Mm-hmm. There were some on the speaker, and then some in his room. Mm-hmm. Is there any way to determine what they would be for? Mm, that's going to be a tough one. Uh, I think we talked yes. about it on the last stream that each key has the same A, B, and C. So you've got two A's, two B's, and two C's, and they're on the two different rings. So it's, the one that you found in the uh, in the hotel is a a backup set, 
yeah. uh, a set that he had made for someone else. Um, you're not super sure. Um, okay. I you know what? Let me let me say this. Uh, presumably, you could have seen that one of the keys matched or was exceedingly similar to the key that Flynn took off the, or whomever took off the peg to go into the speaker's room uh, at the Luskin Arms Inn. So we'll say that okay. one of them uh, was exceedingly similar, if not exactly the same, to his room key. Okay. Um, maybe I just want to ask around to see if anyone has seen the speaker using these keys anywhere. Why don't you give me an in, just a straight intelligence check? Yeah. Not great. That's a six on the die for a nine total. Yeah, someone in the street could probably tell you for sure what these keys go to. Just, I'm not saying like, hey, look at this key. I'm more <laughs> asking like, hey, d where does the speaker tend to frequent? Is okay. what I'm asking around for. That, that makes sense. Um, if you guys don't have anything else specific, we'll go ahead and fast forward the four of you into getting some breakfast um, in the main room. Yeah. Um, Flynn, you're kind of at the tail end of still doing the concentration to move that bonus around. Uh, but the... Um, the wolf's pelt in. Uh, Theo is is there and greets all of you and begins making uh, making some breakfast for all of you. Uh, good uh, good night's sleep. I hope. Uh, ugh, how how is poor poor Delphi? Uh, Silvana said she wasn't super. No, she's uh. She's still sleeping it off. She she around. No, she's still in bed. <laughs> yeah, she's. Uh, yeah, that uh, that goddamn whisk tea will do it to you every time. <laughs> yeah. Um, he'll start setting out some some plates and some 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 water and if you'd like uh, like some ale, uh, and start bringing some food. The ale. It's breakfast. It's... Do we have tea? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you guys are like the only people that's ever been through here to ask about tea. So we got I'll, I'll, we got I'll loads of the shit. I, I ain't, I ain't <laughs> it's first yeah. thing in the morning. Well, yeah. So that thing is like it is a breakfast ale. So it's like an oatmeal stout. You know, it's uh, oh, okay. It's nice. I'm and... allergic to beer. <laughs> oh, well, we have breakfast whiskey. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> he'll so he'll bring down a, a bottle of bacon and eggs whiskey. And sit it down. Uh, I'll let I'll let you think about that in your own little mind. <laughs> um. So uh, he's gonna look at all of you. <laughs> Big plans today. Um. Unfortunately, not. I don't think. <laughs> I uh, figure something out by noon. Yeah, I. You know, by noon. Is that what you said? Yeah, I mean that's in two hours. Uh huh. But you yep. get you get more time than that. But uh, uh, the the services you have done for the city are uh, it, more than more than make up for what may or may not happen. Targos has been nearly destroyed before and built itself back, and so if if it happens again, then we'll just do it again. Uh, well, that's great news. Why don't we just all leave and then we'll let them ransack and we can rebuild. I, that's a, let them ransack should probably be like a last ditch effort. Yeah. Um, cause I, I assume people have their, their lives invested here. Uh, well, yeah, this, this tavern has been in my family for over a hundred years. So wow. I'd, I'd hate to see it go, but we they know. rebuild it. Are you back, Luca? Was this a quick <laughs> was this a quick jaunt around the city? Like were you just hoofing it? So, no, sorry. You said we were 
speeding things up. So I thought I was there, but I'm still walking if I'm walking. Yeah, you're still walking a little bit. Um, Mute yourself. Mute yourself. <laughs> get, get out. Smoke your pin pipe. <laughs> Oh, he's going to get sad. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, Professor, you had asked something somewhat snarky. No, no, no. Uh, we, we know that the Durgar can make themselves invisible. Do, do we have any idea if they can sense other invisible creatures? Hmm... I'm not, uh, I'm sorry, are you asking Buddy or Theo? Uh, everybody in the room, like in, <laughs> in game. Uh, I, I, Theo doesn't know, um, I don't, I don't know that much about Durgar other than stories. I, they, there's also stories that they can make themselves like giants, but I mean, come on, it's a dwarf. How big do you have to be to look like a giant compared to your old self? Well, let's not test the theory, shall we? Um, <laughs> well, I heard um, this guy I know. He goes invisible, but like he steps in between the planes, so he can still see you because technically he's not invisible. He's just not on this plane. So if the Durgar are on the plane, maybe they can't see other invisible people. But if they like plane shift and are just not visible to us, maybe they can still see invisible people. Hmm. That's an interesting, interesting distinction. Theo seems lost in the moment at that, but he's still, he's if, really trying to consider it. If they were plane shifted, would they still leave footprints? I don't know. I would say w without, without rolling an arcana, I would say that that does not seem, if they were on a different plane, they would not be interacting with this plane. Okay. Okay. So. What were you going to say, Zalvana? I'm sorry, you were about to. No, I was going to say, like, they they wouldn't be able to... I was going to say what you said. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, because my original thought last night, while well, the rest of you were sleeping, I, I was... I was. Oh, by the way, I did contact Freddy. Um, he... He was open the, to the idea of helping, uh, and is... I, I, I'm, I'm hoping he was on his way. He was a bit confused, because, you know, I was... I did contact him at a, kind of out of nowhere. He had no no warning. Also, but, how do you give cardinal ooh. directions to a fish? Monster I just ready. <laughs> yeah, no, he was he was great. He, I mean, I told him just to follow the shoreline, hoping he would know where the closest next city was. Um, I don't think we should count on him, but you know, if he gets here, <laughs> uh, I I mean, I did promise him some sort of payment. He said fish. Uh, so if we could round up some fish at some point. Well, that's one thing that we have here in abundance in Targos is well, that's fish. Great. Fish everywhere. The whole damn town built on fish and fishing. Uh, never been so damn tired of fish in my whole life. Well, that it's, I mean, fish might buy us a sea monster, so it's not bad. Not <laughs> sea bad monster. Lake and, and 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 uh, oh, a lake, just a lake monster. He he's eyeing that the bacon and eggs whiskey to see if you two have been nipping on that as well. I have not touched it yet. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> anyway, so my other idea after I after I sent uh, that that uh, that message over that was to possibly magically track track the Chardolin, um, but I but I don't have a way of doing that yet. Uh, so then my next idea was to just, I mean, just to send Krufiel invisible and just say, hey, Krufiel, follow those those guys and find out where they're going and then come back. Um, but that would only work if he can remain undetected. And so if they could see invisible things, it wouldn't work out so well. About this time, the front door opens um, and in comes Josie and with her is Luca. Um, they are both carrying some bags. Uh, Luca, you you saw her coming back from uh, from the market and said hello, and she availed herself of you to carry some of the bags that she has. Right. Oh, uh, good uh, good morning, everyone. It's nice to see that uh, 
that everyone is up. Uh, uh, oh, where's? Oh, She's... Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, Just that off. You guys can see that that mostly uh, in the bags it, it seems to be food, but there there are there are a couple of bags that. It really just looks like there's a... I don't know, why don't you all give me a perception check? Oh, oh good, good. It's it's a low DC. <laughs> oh, Does it involve dicks. smell? How, how low is it? <laughs> 14. <laughs> well, oh, okay. God. Well, okay. Uh, no. So a six, a 10, a 14, and what did you get, Luca? Uh, if it's Man, it not involving dice. smell, <laughs> I got a six. Oof. <laughs> we'll get, get get them out early, folks, because uh, we're gonna we're gonna need the better rolls later. <laughs> so, uh, Flynn, you recognize immediately the uh, the makings for uh, bandages, um, tourniquets. Um, alcohol for cleanings. Um, she's setting the bags down and Theo's helping her put stuff away and she says, I um, I know that, that Delphi might feel bad this morning, but uh, I, I thought maybe she could help me and my girls get things ready here and just in case there are wounded later. And she gets somber, but but quickly steals herself to that and is right back to work. How many oh. how many ships do we have available to us in the harbor? Oh, goodness. Uh, there's there are enough slips for for eight or nine, but I mean at any at any time there there are two or three that are out, you know, Termalane or Passing by, giving the finger to Bremen because they're assholes. Um, <laughs> not Bremen, though they're very nice there. The because the ships run by us are kind of assholes. Um, I mean, so maybe there might be might be eight, eight or nine docked in the ice dock at the moment. I still think it might be best to get as many of the the, the children and and people who are unable to aid in the defense onto onto ships if possible hmm. um well we we just know that the dargar like to, to to ambush and surprise and we wouldn't want to get anyone on the crossfire jo yeah. josie yeah. is still kind of she's putting things away and redoing a lot of what theo has put away um that actually maybe doesn't sound like a bad idea um uh, Grendel asked uh, for you all to come to the town hall once you were up and fed. So maybe you should you should mention it to him. Um, I think he wants to he wants to speak with you all. Um, Absolutely. So maybe maybe you mention that to him. I I, I think that's a lovely idea. Um, but Luca, did did you have a productive morning? Buddy, did I have a productive morning? <laughs> Yeah, so I will say that the, uh, I mean, obviously the weak point is the front gate. Um, there doesn't seem to be like like a portcullis or anything. It It's just two kind of flimsy looking doors for as sturdy as the rest of the walls are. You're not sure why the gates are so flimsy. Maybe they've had uh, trouble in the past and they just haven't been rebuilt well or maybe they just think that it's the hubris of we're in a walled town um you know nothing could happen um you do a little investigating kind of at the around the wall and you you find it between looking and talking that it actually is built kind of quite far down um you know it's seven or eight feet down into the ground so a durgar could burrow under it but they would they would have to go you know pretty deep and, and kind of take a there's not like a quick cut you can get in or out of here so um the um you know that the harbor is basically frozen solid um it's not until you get outside of the harbor walls out to where the ice dock is 
that there's any liquid water. So were they coming on ships or something, they would have to come in to the ice dock and you would be able to presumably see them land at the dock and then make their way toward the city. Um, other than that, the there, none of the buildings are really fortified. The, everything here is wood. Um, not really kind of any siege weapons. You you see that up on top of the the wall, where again there are far fewer guards than there used to be. Um, there seem like there are a number of stands up there for uh, bows and and kind of aerial defense. So, presumably, if you stocked the the walls and the and the, the kind of the guard towers up there that you could get a lot of good cross shots, but still there's a lot of buildings in the way. Mm -hmm. uh, would I be able to surmise the, if the hole in the town hall and the hole in the guard house are a straight tunnel or could they have possibly been two tunnels just based off of like kind of where they're at? It, it's difficult for you to determine that because as you were walking by the barracks, you could see that there were uh, a number of men there of the filling in that hole just with rocks and rubble and <laughs> ice and snow because that's what they have. Um, they're, so they're, they're trying to kind of repack those holes. They, they understand that it won't help since the Dargar can still dig, but why give them a free... <clears throat> a free pass. And I would think I would think that Luca would think that they wouldn't be a straight shot, else you wouldn't have tailed one on the surface going from there to the town hall. Gotcha, gotcha. Um I will say there's one more thing that you did notice that in kind of the there's no real center of town, but maybe kind of off center of town, there was what looked like a very large bonfire. Okay. So we're filling up the death holes first off. So we don't really, we still got to kind of worry about the death holes, but not as much about the death holes. Cause I saw them trying to fill it in as best they could. As for, you know, everything's kind of built pretty well around this town. Besides, you know, the wood building part of it, uh, except the front gate. The tribes could just come straight in through those front gates. So I'm pretty sure the Drugar can just, especially with those giant bugs. I don't, I still don't know what those fucking bugs are. Have we seen the Durgar use any sort of ranged weapons? No, but you have seen that, that some of them do carry javelins. They prefer to fight up close, but almost all of them have two or three javelins um, kind of in a in a quiver. Okay. So even if we can't get people on ships, even if we get them out on the ice, that might help. I don't know. Well, well maybe uh, we should think of this as like um, instead of getting ready for an ambush just get ready for um a uh what's what i'm looking for i don't like a like a parlay like a discussion <laughs> like a parlay going bad yeah <laughs> yeah that's like that <laughs> uh, only a pirate would plan for a parlay to go badly <laughs> you got to yeah, do it as Ivan is doing and stay hydrated though that's yeah. the big thing <laughs> I've been drinking coffee all day. There's no chance. Uh, she, that's a jug of whisk tea right there, y'all. One gallon. Uh, oh. Imdra, Imdra uh, looks at all of you and says, uh, "Yes, these these are all these are all fine ideas, and, and perhaps we should uh, discuss them with with Grendel, uh, since he is has asked for us." Oh yes, that's right. oh yeah, no, yeah. I no, thought no we point, were moving. No let's, point yeah, in in discussing them in a silo. Uh, so we can we can do the whole other discussion here, and then we can have it there too. Because <laughs> that makes for a good stream. <laughs> uh yeah. And so Josie and Theo will will say goodbye, and uh, they will they will tell you that they will take good care of Delphina, and they'll have her up and about in just a little while. And you can see that Josie's taking her some more tea and a little bit more food. Thank you. 
Uh, yeah, you guys, as you go to leave, you open the door and uh, Guard is there on watch outside still. Um, he there. There's another guard there with him, and as soon as you guys um, come out, he he snaps to attention and then looks at the other guy, who then kind of snaps to attention. Uh, morning. Did you sleep? Uh, uh, yes, sir. I did. I, I I caught a little rest, and then I was back here for for the morning shift. You doing good work. Uh, thank thank you thank you, sir. Um. Where, uh, where, where are we off to? Uh, we're gonna go meet, uh, what's his name? The blacksmith. <laughs> Grendel? Grendel. I should, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, he will look at the other guard, and he will kind of whisper something to him, and you can, kind of on the edge of what you're hearing, you can tell him to, to guard this place, the wolf's belt in, guard it with his life, like, to the end. And he will look to all of you and say that he's ready. All right. Let's go. All righty. Um, you guys head out. It's only a couple of blocks from the Wolf's Pelt over to the town hall. Uh, almost immediately, though, a, a, a young boy runs up and tugs at, uh, at, Imdra's, at Im Imdra's arm. Uh, excuse me, miss. Uh, the lady wanted me to give this to you. And you can see it's a folded note with just the letter I on the front of it. I, I'm, I'm sorry, which, which, which lady? Uh, the blonde one with the pretty, with the pretty red cloak. I, 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 don't, I don't know where she is now, but he reaches in his pocket. She gave me a whole silver to bring it to you. And Indra bends down and looks at him and she reaches in her coin purse and pulls out a gold coin. Thank you. Now, Run along a play and don't lose those. And if you have ever seen a child, I mean, Flynn, even more so than when you gave Alasir the professor's dagger or whatever the reverse of that was, <laughs> like you, you can almost see all the way through his face because he's just like a silver and a gold. Yeah, exactly. And so he, oh my God. he gets them both tight in his hand. He's like, Yes, I I won't lose them, and he and he just runs off and runs off. He's so happy and just fists balled up with a coin in each one. Oh my god, we have to get the children out of here. <laughs> um, yes, or at least that one because he's gonna get robbed real quick. <laughs> by you, Luca? No, by all the other kids. You see how scrawny he was? He's gonna get mugged by. Fat Tommy over there. I can see him <laughs> well, right now. Well, oh, well he's, oh, he's got good. Tommy. He's got good fists, though. Um, so Imdra stands up and not punching. <laughs> Imdra looks, stands up, and she looks at the at the note still folded, and then at all of you. Is it from? If you Putin's? can't read it, I'll read it. Um. She will. She'll open it, and she'll read it. And then she will close it, and Flynn, she will, uh, she'll give it to you. And she'll give it to you. Uh, okay. <laughs> Oh, I was like, reading it. Flynn opens it and reads oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on now. Cold reads. That's the best part. I'm going to look Imdra in the face. I'm like, you, you know this is a, like a trap, right? She will look She will look at you just as serious as she could possibly be. Saving these people and defeating the Durgar is more important than... Well, whatever she and I may or may not have had between us, this will keep until after the people of Targos are safe. All right. Um, Flynn, is she about to do something stupid? No, not today. Uh, well, I mean, ah! no, no, no far as stupid as <laughs> what the rest of what the rest of us are doing. Po um, yes, yes, Professor. Possibly in the future, I might do something <laughs> stupid, but not until everyone is safe. And you hear behind you men safe safe 
Hey, they want to keep us safe. These are them. They're the ones that killed the speaker. They made the guards leave to keep us safe, y'all. They need to be punished. And you look, and it's the 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 rotund man the and the jerks the rotund man cauldron? and the halfling who had been selling the soup earlier. Um, if you give me just a second, I'll put you back on uh, that map page, and I'll even display for you my uh, my Bond villain names for them. <laughs> I would very um, much like to go off on them. So the uh, holy shit, the big, the big one is a uh, porcine swinish, and the little one is yep. a diminutive little man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and uh, and yeah, they seem to be trying to kind of raise. Raise the crowd against you, and so the the kind of yelling that I just did at you, they they're kind of continuing that and trying to trying to rouse up a a rabble, as it were, against you. Can um, I just? I can I? I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. But all, all of you, before you make those actions, make me a uh, a perception check, and please, professor, roll something other than a six. Mm, I mean, I've, it's a plus zero, so it's not going to be good. Ooh. That's a dirty 20. I got a five. Ooh, that okay, is a... something other than a six. You yeah, did what right. I asked. You, you I were not specific enough. A 20. Luca? Uh, 19 using my vision. <laughs> yes. Um, so all of you but the professor notice that they are each wearing a platinum pay bracelet. No, mother... Oh, because they're on the payroll for giving out the food. Yep. Um. Can I? Can I? Can I run up on them? Uh, I mean, they're close. You don't have to run. They're kind of close enough that if you just reached out, you could, you could snatch one of them. I, uh, I'm realizing. I'm sorry. I, I didn't turn their, uh, their nameplates on, which is just the funniest thing. To see uh, it written. It's the best bit, yeah. Uh, it's a it, it, it's always tough because I can see them, and I don't know until I look on the side screen that you can't see them. <laughs> um. So this is uh, porcine swinish, and uh, this is diminutive little man. Mm -hmm. All I was gonna do is. Uh, mentally chuck a chuck a snowball at them. Oh, I was gonna dress them down in front of this crowd here. Uh, Do it. So, our, so we've got a snowball. We got a dress down. Zalvana, are you jumping in on this? Or are you just gonna watch? I'm going to watch. Luca. <laughs> We're not at the biting throats phase just yet. <laughs> Unless you want to. No, Luca is kind of, he doesn't want this much attention on him. So he's going to try and back to the, like, be on the opposite end from those showboaters. <laughs> and let whoever wants to interact with him, interact with him. Because this is too much for Luca and he's not looking like uh, he wants to look like if he's going to get in trouble. <laughs> Okay, and then uh, in, in this Imdra will be, she, not overtly, but you can tell she very gently has her hand near the pommel of her sword, and she's not paying attention to these two chuckle fucks at all. You can see that she is like thousand yards staring around to get a better sense of the situation beyond. So, Professor, uh, Tell me, uh, tell me what you do with this snowball and which one of them you're throwing it at. Um, I mean, whoever was doing the main, the main yelling, uh, probably well, most of the yelling was from, from, from porcine swinish. Yes. Yeah. That's who I was aiming for. So, yeah, just gonna, just using mage hand, just form a snowball and just chuck it at him. Why don't you, why don't you give me a, uh, a, a roll to hit with advantage on that? Cool. I'll take free advantage whenever I can get it. 
What's the, uh, what skill is this? Is this just like a ranged attack? Yeah. Uh, well, it's not good. I mean, imp improvised weapon, basically. Uh, 11. His AC is 10. <laughs> oh, so, nice. they sit, all the guards will leave, that'll keep us safe, and just right in his fat fuck mouth. <laughs> a, a dirty, dirty, dirty snowball that your mage hand has scooped up. Uh, and the yellowest uh, snow I could find. The yellowest <laughs> snow you could find. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and he looks down at, at diminutive. Uh, and is kind of looking around to try to figure out what happened. Flynn, in the midst of his spitting out his yellow snow cone, um, please tell me... Uh, Please tell me what you're going to do. So is there, are, are there like townspeople around him? There are a few. They're more so, you get the impression they're more so kind of seeing what the ruckus is as opposed to, oh yeah, let's go, let's go get these some bitches. Okay. Um, uh, mainly, I want enough of them to talk once we leave, you know, I got like, mm -hmm. um, so um, after uh, the snowball clocks him right in the face, <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna run up to him, grab the arm with the bracelet on it, and like hold it up. And what what did he, what did he call us? Like these quote unquote heroes, or or like? Um, he just said that they they want to keep us safe. They're the ones who killed the speaker. Okay. He, he okay. didn't call you anything specifically. Um, I want to, um, yeah, I'm going to grab him by the arm and lift it up. So his platinum bracelet is like right in between me and him. And I'm like, you've got some goddamn nerve. You were on the speaker's payroll. Do you know what that man was doing? You, of course you do. You were extorting all these people out of their food. You were charging them for food that was made free and with magic while your speaker took people off the streets to build a brothel and made deals with the Durgar. So yeah. We got rid of the speaker. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna stand with this town until this problem is dealt with. Unlike people like you and those mercenary guards and your corrupt speaker. So if you got a problem, problems with yourself and that you allied yourself with the corrupt speaker. Um, make an intimidation check with advantage and make a persuasion check with advantage. Oh, okay. Uh, intimidation plus one. But intimidation is 13. And persuasion uh, is a 21. So... Porcine is still spitting out uh, snow kind of as you start that. And and while he kind of manages to hold it together, you can see out of the corner of your eye that Diminutive is kind of shaking his sleeve a little bit to try to make it come down and cover the bracelet he's wearing. But the few folks that are around definitely notice those bracelets and they're like, yeah, Porky, what you five gold for a bowl of soup and you're wearing platinum jewelry? Yeah, what's that? It's Porcy, not Porky. And and so <laughs> they certainly you you have definitely won this crowd who begin verbally accosting these two and they quickly try to move away from you. Uh but the crowd follows them. So make sure to ask them what happened to the cauldron. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> they uh, their footsteps become maybe a little faster at that when you mention the cauldron, uh, but that does not deter the town folks who were still haranguing them roundly for for answers. And they're you can see that they're trying to as they turn a corner away, they're trying to take the the bracelets off of the two of them. Let's let's hurry and get to Grendel because we're gonna have to tell these people that they can fight for their lives in about. <laughs> Ten hours. <laughs> I think we know who the sacrifice is going to be tonight. If we can't, you know, kind you of know what? Out that whole you thing. know what? 
That's not a bad idea. <laughs> Two for the price of one. Yeah. I'm gonna write this. Yeah. yeah, hold on. You're gonna write this down. Make sure we can. Porky and Littleman for. Uh, man, I love you guys so much. All right, yeah. you're, gonna, you're gonna continue to the town hall, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh hold on. I I I didn't fin talk amongst yourselves. I didn't finish cleaning tokens up. Uh. I got like 90% and then I stopped. So talk amongst yourselves. Uh, is Krufiel right. out with you or? Um, yes. He would probably be invisible on my shoulder because he unsettles people. Mm. True, but that's, so he is, he's very cute and moist, but cute. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no. I was I, just going to say, he unsettles Luca, but he's at least got a use for mm. lighting my pipes. But if he's wet, mm -mm. <laughs> if he's moist. Mm -mm. Um, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I sense another title uh, brewing, but uh, I, won't, I won't make you choose. Okay. So you guys show up. I've, I've re-blacked some of this because you don't know what's going on inside there. Cause you're not there. Uh, but you guys approach. It is the, uh, the five of you and Guard. So, so six. Yeah. Um, and you approach, there are uh, two guards out front. And as you all uh, approach, they straighten up very nice and tall and crisp and salute all of you. That's, that's hardly necessary. Um, done settling. Is is Grindal inside? Uh, yes, sir. They are. They are waiting for you upstairs. Uh, oh, all right. Uh, th thank you. And Guard will come up and open the door. Um, you you guys notice that he seems to be maybe stepping a little taller and stronger than he was, and you notice that there's there's some sort of new kind of hardware on his on his collar oh, did he, um, he did <laughs> he is now lieutenant guard Ooh. Ooh. Um, and he will uh, he'll come in and gesture for all of you to enter you see uh, the familiar face of Celia there she looks like she hasn't slept a lot she slept a little but not a not a ton um buddy real quick can you give me control of crew feel and that is so weird here let me just drag him on again all right here you try to drag him on from the Do yeah not... if i drag him on if okay. i drag him on i can move him. i must have been using an old copy of him uh and then flynn and zavana you should both have control of your tokies cookies there he is okay uh, yeah, and so Celia is there. She she looks like she hasn't slept much. Um, she's definitely less well dressed than she was last night. She what she has on now is very kind of utilitarian, and you can see that the dagger that she had taken out of her drawer last night, she she actually is wearing in a scabbard on on her hip, and she just she just looks ready, whereas she had just been a secretary last night. Now she understands that she may be called upon to in the defense of, of the town. So she's trying to be as ready as she can be. Good. Good. Oh, good morning. Um, I trust you. You all rested well. Uh, well enough. Not a bit. Uh, they, <laughs> is is uh, Grendel upstairs? Uh, it, he is. And I, I know what you mean about not resting. Some of us had to clean up flour all night. Um, uh, uh, Guard, there. Oh, you should have said something. I would have helped. I don't sleep anyway. That's fine. I, I apologize. <laughs> they are. They are upstairs. Uh, Guard, uh, you. You may take them, and he will nod, and he uh, will take. Cecilia, you. do you do you know how to use anything else other than that uh dagger? Um. Well, I mean, I know the the basic concepts, but I, I've never handled much more than this. Um. I, I, I got, I got a spare rapier. Uh, 
it's it's uh basically all you get to do is point and thrust go for the meaty bits <laughs> yep go for the meaty bits hey <laughs> <laughs> She will take it from you and uh, give it a couple of swishes. Go for um, the meaty bits. Name of the... <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a title option now. <laughs> uh, she'll give it a, 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 a swish and flick a couple of times. Yes. And, um, uh, yeah, I, I thank you. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little practice. Uh, and uh, just keep in mind, it's less like a... Like a like a hammer where you want to hit it with your wrist, and more like a like a pen where you drive it with the end of your fingers. As you're talking, she is she's kind of changing those moves to, she's like okay, so not this, but more, and I mean she you can tell that she she doesn't have finesse yet, but she she's kind of quickly picking the basic of it up. As yeah. someone who does a lot of writing, that makes sense to her. Yeah. I um, like to call rapiers the curse of, of the swords. <laughs> That's cool. Is is that like Curse of Strahd? No, no, Cursive. Oh, Cursive. I thought you said the Curse of Swords. No, <laughs> no. That's what I heard. I heard Curse of Swords. I was like, how? Uh, uh, Okie dokie. So I'm going to move you guys over. They uh, He takes you through and up the stairs, and you are now in that kind of familiar space right outside the, um, the little conference room where you guys had had your meeting last night. Um, and Guard knocks on the door. And the door opens. Hold on, let me get my reveal tool out. Uh, the first person you see is um, Miat Shield, who is also... <laughs> uh, Rocking some some new hardware on his shirt collar, presumably uh, a lieutenant as well. I'm gonna high five, high five both of them as I walk in. <laughs> uh, they they will do it as like discreetly as they can. Low fives. Right. Yeah. Low fives. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, and yeah, you see seated at the table, you've got uh, Grandel, and you've got three others, two men, one who I have his name tag out, and the other two that I don't yet. Uh, yes, yes, come in, come in. I, I trust everybody has been to bed and had some food. Yeah, yep. Close enough. Uh, yeah, and then... At what... At now that we're in we're in here, I will take Krufiel and just kind of set him on the table in front of me. V visibly? Oh yeah. So now that we're inside, he'll he'll be visible. <laughs> there's there's a little bit of reaction, but not the not the same reaction that you normally get. These people, it seems like maybe they've seen some shit. So your yeah. uh, your antics are. Uh, are I mean, the, pur currently. the purpose is not the shock. The purpose is I have a plan, and I need to be able to demonstrate that plan uh, at some point. So Krufiel is on the table. Gotcha. <laughs> Literally on the uh, table. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, please. Uh, please come in and sit down. Uh, to my right, uh, this here is Justin. He owns the, the Triglio General Store. Uh, to my right, this is Ethan Yarbrough. She, uh, she runs, uh, sorry, roll 20s at that slow point already for me tonight. Um, um <laughs> like, it's like, I just need to click on tokens and turn their name tags on. Uh, she, uh, I've forgotten the name of the place that she runs. She runs one of the finest establishments in town. And it's called the Three Flag Sailing. Uh, and this other character here is Russell. He runs a, let's say, a less savory place called the Trip and Shuffle. And, um, Luca, you remember that when you went by the, the Trip and Shuffle, uh, it very much looked closed. Um, 
like there was re there was significant repair work going on to it. But they all they all greet you and uh, Ethan says. Uh, Everybody calls me Ma, so you should go ahead and do that, too. Done. Oh, OK. <laughs> she seems like a just the sweetest old lady. Well, what type of establishment is is three flags sailing? Oh, it it is just a wonderful, wonderful fisherman's bar. Yeah, wonderful if you like to just sit around and not do anything. It's kind of a good natured ribbing. Um, well, the fishermen come in and everybody sits and respects each other. And my bar's never been shut down from fights that have been inside it. And she kind of looks at him very sweetly. You can tell they're ribbing, but they're also taking the piss out of each other a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but everybody that comes into my place gets a tall glass of hot beer. I yeah okay. Uh, all right. All right. It's, it's cold. Well, it's, all the time, it's, so like, it's it's yeah. cold. So you 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 warm the beer up to it warms you up inside like like a good stew. Nothing like a good stew and a hot beer. And what does Russell run? Uh, his place is called the Trip and Shuffle. Is that a dance and, hall? What's that? Is that a dance hall? Uh, yeah. You know what? There's <laughs> there's drinking. There's dancing. There's fighting. Um, he he pretty much caters to, to anybody and everybody, but it is known to be kind of a wild place. And when she says my bar's never been shut down for repairs, he will kind of hang his head and and smile a little and he'll look at all of you and say, well, yes, uh, about a week ago, a let's just say a party got out of hand and a uh, newly remodeled room coming soon, though. Hey, upside. Ooh, you know what? That might not. Is your clientele local, uh, and loyal to you? Well, everybody here is local, but I don't know how many of anybody are are loyal. Well, that's step in the right direction. Uh, <clears throat> Grandol will. He he seems to be assuming a little bit of a lead role here, uh, but he will tell you that the because of long-standing business owners and just folks that have been around the town for a long time. The four of them have been selected as an emergency council of Targos. Um, should there be a point where they are locked on a decision, uh, they might entreat anyone, but specifically might entreat you guys to see uh, what your thought would be for like a tiebreaker. Okay. Uh, so, best we can determine, there are about 50 guards remaining. There's somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 that have left or are otherwise unaccounted for. I mean, hey, they might not be together. Some of them were, were just little candy-ass pansy mercs. Maybe they just left and went to do their own thing. We um, we did run into some mercs at the Luskin Arms and told them that if they were willing to stay, we would pay them. Uh, have have any of them remained or did they all leave? Um, I will say that, that one of the guards out front of Town Hall you recognize as one of those guys from last night. Um, now that you're thinking on it a little bit. Um, yeah. So at least at least one of them has they the the but council in general word did not get around to the rest of the mercs. Um, you're you're not sure, and neither is the council. Fair enough. Okay. They they've not had. Uh, I can tell you that have not been a group of people beaten their way to the front door to to get hired. Um, some of the some of the locals have been spent the morning chipping rust off of their swords and pulling out dinged dingy dress armor but uh but we've got a couple here like Miat Shield and Guard who we've promoted to lieutenant Lut are you threatening me <laughs> Pike by rolling he's just continually rolling oh, in roll 20 <laughs> are you threatening are you threatening me cuz we can no. we can 
<laughs> we can do this. We'll burn this fucker down from inside the town hall. I didn't think it was working. My, my chat was scrolled up and it wasn't. <laughs> I was wondering what was that like, group was. <laughs> I was like, well, because my sounds are off too. Anyway, I'm sorry. I've derailed everything. <laughs> it's okay. Sometimes you need a little break like that. Um, uh, go out and meet Shield. I've been promoted to, to lieutenant for the outstanding bravery and work that I've done, uh, backing, backing all of you up and, and keeping watch on things. Um, so I guess there's a number of things to discuss. Um, 50 guards, handful of townsfolk who maybe can fight. How do we best deploy them? If any of the mercs return through the front gate, do we let them in? Do we turn them away? Could easily be a trap if they've come back. Um, well, we can... Uh, <laughs> can handle that a couple of ways. Um, thank you, thank you, Pale Dragon, for that 100 bits. Oh, oh yeah. yeah! Yeah, thank you! Um, if they come through the front gate, we could meet them there and have our negotiations, as it were. Uh, He's talking about uh, mercs. If if any mercs show oh. up wanting to come back in, should they should they be allowed in or turned away? If if they're showing back up, it could just as easily be a trap. Human, hum, uh, unless they're dirt cars, I don't I don't know, I don't think so. Uh, you probably could probably could let them in. Um, if not, they can. Burn with the Dargar as far as I care. Mm. The most most mercs are just trying to get paid, and so it depends on if we believe the Dargar have approached them with payment, because we've told we we can pay them if. So. Yeah, <clears throat> abs. I mean, and the town can pay as well. I mean, the no matter how much money we have, if we all end up dead in the morning, the money won't do us any good. So, if 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 some some former forces show up, we'll just see if we can pay them, pay them onto yep. our side. Uh, we've tried filling in the holes in the town hall basement and the barracks. Uh, obviously, those. Buggers are diggers, so it won't matter, but at least now they won't get a free a free tunnel in, as it were. Um we found some crates of armor and weapons with Bryn Shander's stamp on them, most likely <laughs> stolen from there, which unfortunately means the Zentarum are not contained to just Targos. Well, I mean oh. we're not a hundred percent sure there's Zentar Oh, of course we're fucking sure, Justin, that there's a Tartum. So you you can so even though they're a council, these little things come up and they they are squabbling mm -hmm. just a little bit. Ah, uh, of course there's in Totem. Just open your eyes. Uh, we can we can tell you from traveling that no, it's not it's not just in Targos. The uh, <clears throat> the bodies of the speaker, the Durgar, the Steeders, and the Soul Blades have all been burned in the town. Not the town square, but off to the side. Luca, you remember that you saw a, a fire, a large bonfire earlier. The soul blades? Hmm, yes. Uh, they're a lot like the regular Durgar, but they they can channel oh, they, psychic they, energy yeah, into, a, into a blade to fight with. It's, it's oh, tough yes. to get them somewhere unarmed since they can just form a blade. That's cool. Yeah, we so. did run into a few of those. Didn't know you had a word for them. Mm. And all of you just let me pass by with the other word I said that you continue to have asked me about, and you just it... let it slide by. Oh, the bug I thing. didn't hear the what other you one. Said. What I was heard. the other thing you said? It wasn't well, the other cool one. Like Soul Blade the, was the, the speaker. Nope, not the that Durgar. one. The, the Durgar. After that. Yep. The soul, the soul Blades. Before that. The Steeders. There. That's it. Uh huh. Uh, I thought you said Steelers. <laughs> Screw you, Ben Roethlisberger. Um, uh, what yeah. does this have to do with football? Giant, uh, giant hunting spider 
type creatures from the Underdark. The, the Durgar tamed them of a sort and sometimes ride them into battle. Sometimes they just show up to make chaos. Sometimes they just kill each other. Mm -hmm. The Steeders, not the Durgar, though yeah, they've yes. been known to do that as well. We're not that lucky. I mean, that might be a potential avenue of, of defense if we can aggravate their steeders somehow into rampaging among their own ranks. How much do we know about steeders? Uh, that a giant spider-like creatures from the Underdark. You know what I know, lad. Um, Luca and Zolvana, you guys have been uh, just kind of in observation mode. And while it's fine for Andrew to be that way, since I have to play her as well, <laughs> I'd like to see if you guys have uh, things that you want to two cents that you want to add or, or questions that you may have or just things that you're trying to, to notice. Um, I want to make sure you guys don't feel left out because I love you guys. Yeah. I love you too. Um, I was thinking about this whole Steeder thing. Like if they're from if they're from the Underdark, then I wonder if like sound would aggravate them. And I think I have a spell for that. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, loud sounds, bright lights. Uh, any anyone from the Underdark, the the Steeders, the Durgar, the Drow, bright light for sure. Not a not a fan. I th I think that's why they've they've all kind of made the Dale a, a home in the last couple of years because it's never bright anymore. I mean, I I look down at my hand and um, can at will create light because I'm a light bear and mm -hmm. I was like well we can we can play with that a little bit <laughs> there's kind of a oh that's, that's pretty fucking cool there's, there's definitely uh, some <laughs> some nods around the table of uh of appreciation mm, things to mm. think about all right mm -hmm. Luca in conjunction with the mercenaries coming back, if they do come back. We can offer a reward. Whoever kills the most enemies, we have to be we have to clarify as enemies to the town. Um, because some of these mercies, I don't know. They might they might stab you in the back, they might not stab you in the back. Um says the man who just... promises to stab people in the back all the time. Indra. Well, that's how he knows. Exactly. <laughs> See, I, this is Indra how I know. You. By the way, Flynn, um, don't be surprised later on today. But, <laughs> side note. Yeah, we, we won. Can... Oh! <laughs> Either way. As a reward, we can give two platinum to whoever kills the most enemies of the town. To make it a contest. Might invigorate some of the mercs some more. Might invigorate some people in the room some more. I don't, I don't. Just food for thought for him. And Russell will pipe up. I, yeah, we could also offer drink tokens for every everyone that you can certify that you killed. As soon as the trip and shuffle is, is back running, you can redeem that for a drink. The one thing, in addition to money, that I know the... Uh, the mercs like is uh is a drink so yeah i think i think that's incentivizing kills of, of durgar not a not a bad idea we'll come up with a solution for that later <laughs> the uh you hear kind of heavy stomping footsteps outside and the door here. Um, what? Hmm. Sorry, Roll20 has left the building. Oh, oh no. no. Bye. Oh, no, come back. I, I feel I come back? I feel like it was all... Here, I'm just going to do an F5 refresh. Um. So I can't move the token over, but you... Uh, you hear some heavy stomping and some loud speaking. It's not quite yelling, but it sounds like somebody's. I don't need your your damn permission to come up here. Is it, and um, is it, is it 
It is not Porky. <laughs> or at least the voice does not sound like Porky. Oh, is it? Uh, I don't know. I'll wait. I'll wait till they get up here. Are you, you sure? You can keep guessing. We can no, play this all guessing. night long. <laughs> the uh, night is young. The night is young. Uh, the door bursts open, and in comes a man in his 40s with tawny skin, brown hair, and a, a strong jaw. You, you might say that he was handsome, if not for just the huge scowl on his face. Well, well, well. I see you've all just made yourselves comfortable here. Has everyone forgotten that I used to be the speaker of Targos? Anyone think maybe to ask me my opinion? Hmm? And he will look at you, the party. So what's your game, then? Destabilize an entire town, make the leadership change to the one that likes you? If so, we're doing an excellent job. I just <laughs> met them last night. <laughs> like the I don't fucking like you at all. Oh, no. well, Luca, that's shit his point. Up this his morning. pointing to Luca with that. There's, there's a, there's this? a lot of cross chatter at the table, and Grendel kind of quiets people down. <sighs> Giandro Holfist, former speaker of Targos. That's right. Why? I am a former speaker. I'm a master shipwright. I am a member of the Dock Workers Guild here. Everyone show me proper respect. Oh, that doesn't seem right. the way to go about things. Uh, <laughs> you said former speaker. Why, why, were you, why were you ousted? Yeah. Well, everything was going fine until Nerith got here and started spreading his money around like a woman on holiday. That's how he won. He just, just paid everybody off. <laughs> Dude, he's he's a horrible person, Zilvan. I mean, <laughs> he just he just paid everybody. Probably rigged the goddamn election. And you hear Ma is just kind of in her grandmotherly voice. Well, that that didn't keep the two of you from still being very friendly, though. Now did it? And he rounds on her. Just what are you insinuating, old bitch? He Did looks you, like the, a bomb. And, and she of- she slowly pushes her chair back. And stands up. I move back. <laughs> mm-hmm. Russell gives her a little bit. Gr- Grindel doesn't move, but Russell kind of moves into you just a little bit, Luca. Um, and she stares at him right across the right across the table. If you're asking for respect, maybe you should put a little bit on my name, because I've been here for three speakers. And you were the piss pottiest one of all of them, including that bastard that just got cut in half last night. Mm-hmm. And then she slowly sits back down and pulls her chair back up. And there is an uncomfortable silence in the room for a moment. Sounds like you handed the town over to the, to the next speaker on a silver platter, my man. It, it wasn't so. He he was giving everybody gold and platinum, these yeah, bracelets, but, running running around like a bunch of damn harlots wearing bracelets. Yeah, but mm. you're also an asshole. So like, yeah, it's hard to feel bad for you, right? Yeah, that's um, the so thing. Like, none of, see. nothing you're saying is is really wrong, but I I don't like you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the story of Professor and Luca. <laughs> So, uh, have a seat, <laughs> shut up, and we're going to figure out how to get through today. <laughs> Gren- <laughs> Grendel, with a, with a bemused smile. It's always fun to watch a dwarf smile. Where did my music go? Gone. It's gone. Oh, it must have been on my reload. Frozen. Yeah, it's just like windy bits right now. Windy bits. There we go. Um, uh, Grendel will crack a little bit of a dwarven smile. Giandro, we're a little pressed for time, so could you either have your meltdown later or maybe just somewhere else? This isn't over, Grendel. Once your manufactured emergency passes, we will see what the townspeople say and we will know 
who they want as the new speaker again. And with that, he will round out the door, stomping I'll, I'll like hard foot stomping down the stairs, like like a child not getting his way. Like I want a toy, hard foot stomping and slow. <laughs> like he's like he's like it don't take you that long to get down the stairs. Glenn, <laughs> there's someone higher up on the twice on the way down. <laughs> yeah, basically, and <laughs> and and Miatchiel just closes the door behind him. Ah, uh, well, I, uh, I think that, that we should probably call a town meeting, but we got to figure out how much to tell them. It should be, everybody knows about the speaker because he's on fire in the courtyard. <laughs> Sorry, um, that's <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> uh, zero bucks. Um. Uh, are we are we gonna cancel the sacrifice? I think it's stupid. I think we should cancel and just not do it anymore. Um, um, no, you so have two perfect options. We met them on the way here. Go that on, fucking little man. I don't know their actual names. <laughs> oh, Porky. I mean, little man literally is his name. So yeah, yeah like are you talking about Porky and Bacon Bit? The Frost oh doesn't God. want them. The That's cross. why you give her both. You get two for the price of one. She, two for the I, price I, of one. I think I think she's watching her weight. I don't think she wants either of them. Um, yeah. We oh. we 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 can, but I I think that this is a perfect chance to just get rid of the whole damn thing. And there's I there's there's good. some agreement. None of the others are as vocal, but no one is being vocal against it either they're 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 not like does that make sense they're not like jumping on yeah. board to commit but they're also not like no we have to keep it for the for all real yeah. no one's waving um, her banner so yeah uh we, we should we should definitely get a town meeting going we uh the, the professor was talking earlier and we, need, we should be telling um anyone who's not capable of fighting to get out of town for the next couple days. Just what do we um, do? Do we send them to Bryn Shander? I mean, we haven't really had a chance to talk to them about what's going on here, and the fact that they have Zents in their their midst. Of the, the 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 Mercs could have gone from here to there. Or or that we just like keep keep them in the boat out in the water for for the night. I don't think they're gonna swim. We'd be surprised what they could do, but uh, I mean that's uh, that's an option, I guess. Uh, Put them on the boats. Um, and, you know, let them figure out if they want to do the sacrifice or not. Like, we were, we were saying, uh, like, your food was already taken, so you could also do the sacrifice of of, of the food since the Mercs turned tail and ran with the the cauldron. Or if we're going to stay, stay up all night fighting. Uh, or the, the, the flower, if it the, hasn't been disposed of already. Yeah, um, that too. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what happened with all the, the Russell. I don't know what happened with all the flour. It's like a, it's like a like a trip and shuffle party. I mean, to be honest, but uh, that was that was kind of kind of strange here in that story. Yeah, that's uh, my fault. Apologies, uh, son. You've never been speaker of a town, have you? No. <laughs> to be in charge means you don't ask them what they think. You gotta tell them what you think is best, and you just gotta hope that you're right. I come from a very uh, democratic guild. <sighs> Ten Towns was that more like that once, but uh, the last couple of years, for sure, has been it's been difficult, and if you can't can always be... afford the luxury of democracy. If if you don't mind me saying, uh. Is there a chance of going back to the more de I don't want to seem rude, uh, but in the brief time that we've had here in the Ten Towns, uh, the speaker thing does not seem to be working out. Uh, seems like a lot of them are corrupt. A lot of them keep dying. <laughs> um, it seems like if we had, like like you like you folks, uh, a, a council, they would be, a, I mean, at least somewhat more resilient to corruption 
Well, uh, I mean, it's it's uh, it's definitely a possibility. The the speeders themselves are part of a council that that meet generally generally once a month uh, about about things going on in their own towns and how to best help the ten towns all together. But so you're saying it's ten towns, sort of ten councils that make like a super council? Yeah, yeah. I mean. Where I come from, there is there is a, a, a council that that tends to to rule over the entire land, but it, the, the the idea is that there is no one centralized power. Yeah. And Ma looks at you, and and where is that, honey? Where where do you come from? Where they have that? That sounds lovely. Uh, I mean, it's it's far from here. I I doubt I doubt you would have heard of it. Well, yes, I. I am a young lass who, who hasn't heard of many things. <laughs> she and Grendel share a, a, a laugh. Not like an awkward laugh, but like a we're old as hell laugh. Um. In, in, anywhere that we might know? No, no, I, I legitimately don't think so. I hear dice. Let's go. <laughs> Jesus. You are the luckiest son of a bitch. That's, that's a three and a two from the two of them on insight. Uh, well, well, all right. Um, so you think we should put women and children on boats? Uh, or just get, get them out of town uh, at the very least. Um, if... If we're lucky, the Durgar are going to come for parlay about their payment, they, the, the payment arrangement they have with the previous speaker. Uh, if we're not lucky... Well, if they had an arrangement with him, he's dead. There should be no oh, more arrangements. Oh, we're all topsiders to them. Doesn't matter if he's dead or not, we still got to pay his fucking debt. It's unfortunately mm. true. Yeah. Yes. Um, Racist bastards. Sounds the Durgar like holding sounds like the entire a, tower. Sounds like a goddamn Durgar. Um, Racist ass my... Durgar. <laughs> 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 uh, at the very, very least, we bought. We touch on all sorts of subjects here today, you guys. <laughs> we we we'll take we'll take everything to task. We don't care. Biscuits, we'll talk about it. Racism, <laughs> we'll talk about it. So, um, uh, on, on that note, um, well, the speaker has promised them a large amount of uh, a substance called Chardelin, uh, and I will pull out, I will not touch it, but, like, float out a tiny piece. I would say that uh, the... With Mage the, Hand. Justin and Ma and Russell all kind of look quizzically, and you see a, a grave pallor cross Grendel's face. And Professor, even with your not exceptionally high perception, it is it's palpable. The the, the grave look on his face is palpable. What in all the gods names do they want with Shardalin? Uh Unfortunately, we don't know what their purpose is. Um, the speaker has promised them 500 pounds of the stuff. Um, and we only have these three small bags. Um, it, it, is there anywhere, I mean, Grendel, are you familiar with the substance? Do you know where it comes from? He's, he has moved away and is now looking out the window. I, I'm familiar with it. <clears throat> I uh, I know that it uh, it can be smithed quite easily. It can be imbued with magic quite readily. And I know that if the Durgar want it and want that much of it, that it's bad. Not just for the Tin Towns, 
but proudly bled for the whole planet. Oh, shit. What would they be doing with it? The sky's the limit. Sounds like they would build a second, more powerful army to fuck up everything else if they're going to turn all of it into weapons and or armor based off of what he said. Possibly. I know that, uh, well, a hundred years ago, it, uh, it almost led to the destruction of Targos and, and most of the Tin Towns, uh, just be, just because of some of the magics that were, that were used with it. Um, I, what happened? Uh, that's a, that's a story for another time. Um, I, I do not think it is in anyone's interest to give them even what little that we have. Is that, is that all that there is? And he'll point to the, the three bags that you have. Yeah. It's, it's all that we know of right now. We've encountered, uh, several daggers made of the stuff. I, I believe those were all taken from us. Um, this is actually the remnants of a statue that was in. Yes. Uh, Rimshander. East Haven. East Haven. So. Oh, the, the, the demon, uh, the demon yeah. ship smell. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh. So at the very least, uh, whatever limited supply that there is has been like shuffled around. Um, which brings us to our imminent uh, meeting with the Durgar tonight. Um, well, I, I, I will say that that's not all of it. All of it that was uh, in the statue? No, that's not all of it that's in this room. Uh, uh, what do you uh, mean? Please elaborate. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, he and he is still looking, or he's back rather to looking out the window. Well, one of you is wearing some of it. And that's where we're gonna take our oh, come break. Ah, oh, oh, yeah. Welcome back, everyone. I uh, I hit the the lottery going to break with my players. I found the perfect, perfect, perfect place to uh, to pause them. And there's been all sorts of speculation in the back chat about uh about who's wearing what. But let's just reset the scene just in case you're just hopping back with us. The um. Oh, I think Flynn might have just picked it up. Or he was warming his hands, one or the other. I'm not super sure. Warming my hands. I didn't know. I didn't get it. I still don't get it. I, I, I still don't get it. I thought you went. <gasps> um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so they the uh, the Harbingers have been summoned to, uh, to the town hall again, uh, meeting with the emergency council um, of Targos and uh, trying to figure out what to do about not having that many town guards left and having these Durgar that are going to come attack the town unless they can come up with 500 pounds of the rare and seemingly very dangerous mineral Chardolin. And um, Grendel Granite Fist has uh, just told everyone that the Chardolin that they have in the bags recovered from East Haven is not the only Chardolin in the room. Someone in the room is also wearing some Chardolin. Let's pick that back up right where we left off. Uh, one of you bum, bum, is, bum. one of you is wearing some. Excuse me. Zovana. What? May I take a closer look at your your dark sword pendant? Oh sweet Jesus. Yes. And I will get close and examine her her pendant. It it very much looks like the um, the chardelin that you have in the bags, but whereas you still get 
kind of an oogie feeling off the stuff in the bags. The the pendant that she has, it doesn't kind of creep you out. And you know that you've heard them tell you about, you know, how you were acting, Professor, when you were under the influence of the Chardolin that is now in the bags. But you've, you've not seen any of that from Zalvana. So I would say that as a magic user, hearing Grendel say that it can easily be imbued with magic, that must... What's in the bag must have some some really, really funky shit put on it. And what she's wearing must not have that same kind of magic imbued into it. Okay. What do you think, well, Professor? I mean, I should have... I should have caught on earlier, but... I don't, a, I don't see any, any long-term effects or any short-term effects. The, the long-term effects may yet to be seen. Um, he, will, he will turn around and, and actually come, come back and sit in his chair. I, uh, I haven't known her for very long, but I think she's lovely. So I think that you're right. I mean, she's not as lovely as the... Where is the other one? The one that's my favorite. The one... <laughs> Drinking, oh, drinking the, drinking the whiskey tea and eating the bread tacos. She's, she's my favorite. She, yeah. she's, she's paying for that this morning. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> some, sometimes you got to, but uh, you're you're almost just as lovely as she is, dear. Mm, thank you. Selfie's the best. So, I uh, I don't think it's a good idea to give them any. I agree. Um, no, not. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm inclined to agree with you. Yes. My, no, my normally, I would say we should bury it, but if we bury it, then they could <laughs> probably just find it. Correct. My only, my only comment would be if, if we could save Targos for for another day and then deal with the Durgar in the future. I, I agree. They shouldn't. They shouldn't get it, and if they do get it, they shouldn't be left to keep it. But I don't think we should sacrifice the the entire town to try to keep it away from them. Justin will pipe up. What, but what good's a day going to do? I mean, uh, no offense, we, we thank you for everything that you've done, but, but you don't live here. Are you going to move in? Are you just going to live in Targos now? And are you going to help us push off one more day and, and keep pushing them back? Are you going to be here when they come in and just raise the whole city to the ground? Uh, no, uh, and that brings me to my plant. Now I've got food in my mouth. <laughs> they, thank you for your, your honesty there, Luca, who is just like... Ah. And, and, and you know what? I, I will say that as you're doing that, uh, Indra will, will move over to you and like 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 elbow bump you like, hey, hey, simmer down. Simmer down. Just trying to be an honest story. Right? <laughs> just... just, just, no, just my just My only goal in, in postponing their attack would be to perhaps find out where they are camped so that we could go on the offensive instead of being defensive. Um, on that note, uh, I do. I The only idea I did have was, is, is Krufiel here. Uh, say hello, Krufiel. Ah, yes. Hello, Krufiel. Yes, thank you, Master. <laughs> I love him so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a... Um, a being that I have bound into my service, uh, Krufiel. Uh, Krufiel uh, can become invisible. Uh, mm. Krufiel, mm. please, please demonstrate. Ah, uh, yes, and he will, and is now invisible. And Imdra is like fully skeeved. <laughs> Justin fully skeeved. Uh, you know, Grendel and Ma, like, kind of nonplussed. Russell, like, hmm, it's a good trick. Uh. Miat Shield so, and Guard are doing their best to maintain their lieutenant, you know, stripes right now. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps if we were able to to postpone the attack and have Krufiel or or someone else follow them invisibly, we could determine where they are, where their home is, or where their camp is, what have you, and and launch our own. 
counterattack when the when the city itself was not in in danger. And what do you suppose we would counterattack with? In case you haven't noticed, our uh, most of our guards have are only in it for the money and have turned tail and left. Uh, I raise my hand. Yeah, it would it would be the same. It would be the same force. the The goal would just be that uh, surprise would hopefully be on our side in that case, and the town itself, not the battlefield. The yeah. There's a it's, knock on the door be above, next to Miat Shield. A polite knock, but a knock. Grendel's listening yeah. to what you're saying, Professor. Uh, it, do, should we get that? Mm. You know they've been speaking of a town before, have you, son? Finish what you're saying. <laughs> oh, that was mostly it. I just... It's, it's not the best plan, um, but it might protect some of the... Uh, the children and, and, and the elderly that would be in the line of fire otherwise. Krufiel, is it? There's a knock, the knock again. Krufiel is his name? Uh, yeah. Can he, uh, can he open doors? Yes. Kru Krufiel, do you want to, do you want to, do you want to open the door? Mm, yeah, yeah, well, yes, master. I want to do whatever you want me to do. Mm. Uh, Krufiel, <laughs> can you, can you fly? You've got wings, right? Yes, absolutely. That's how I get around, is flying, <laughs> Master. I mean, you do have legs. You can't walk. Well, yes, I. that's true. I, I can't walk. But I only walk with you on bridges, Master. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's also anyway, could you, could, you, could you hop over and, and open the door? I absolutely can do that, yes. <laughs> I mean, you, you don't do see him. You, do, you, you don't. Do, will you do it now? Oh yeah, yes, I will. And and again, you don't see him, but uh, the door, as if by magic, opens, and standing in the doorway is Valin. Here she is. Um. Oh, that's a good trick. Uh, might I join you for some uh, for some information? Please. Uh, Yes, your your opinion is quite welcome. You two have never been speaking before, have you, sons? Is that your catchphrase? Uh, <laughs> Clearly uh, they haven't been. Uh, apparently so. Uh, yes, my data, come in. And she steps in, and you told Crewfield to open the door, but he's still, like, smack dab in the middle, and so she <laughs> she hits his invisible fleshiness and... Uh, uh, <laughs> Ah, ah, yes. Uh, forgive me, mistress. Crucial. Get out, get out of the way. And he, he will come back over. You hear him like <laughs> wetly sit on the table next to you, Professor. And Valen is just like, is this, is this, is this really happening? And then she'll, she'll step in and close the door behind her. Crucial. Don't, don't be rude. It, it, it appear. Make yourself visible. <laughs> and he will he will pop in and she moving having moved right up to the corner of the table where he is. is like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Have you not met Crufio? I thought he was uh, Well Welcome it, to the club. It was it things were a bit they, they were a bit busy last night. I almost went into Grandel's voice for her. I don't know why. Uh Crufio, come over here. You're you're unsettling people again. <laughs> ah, Aww. yes, yes, unsettling is good. It's good. No, it's bad. It's bad. Because it over it's here. I mean, it's pretty indifferent. Sometimes it's nice. Okay. But come yes. sit on, come sit on my shoulder, please. <laughs> ah, yes, my Delphina spot. Um. <laughs> yes, come sit on my Delphina. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, but it's too long. It's too long for a title. Come sit on my Delphina, please. I'm going to write it down, even though it's too long. Oh, um, my God. God. Someone's sending that to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Come sit on my Delphina, please. Uh, <clears throat> so, I've been out for the last few hours. Um with my familiar, my owl. His name is Patch. <laughs> See, because I only have... You don't know what's funny. We, uh, we get I, the joke. 
I've I've had him running increasingly larger search patterns and does he help you see? Is that the uh well I can either see through his eyes or he can do a pattern and then come back and tell me. <clears throat> I've had him looking Is it for similar to the Crufio, can I see through your eyes? Uh, 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 of course, Master. And he begins to try to pry them out. No, of... no, 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 not let, no, wait. Just, just sit still. Um, look at, uh, uh, just, just look over there at Flynn. And I'm going to turn around and look at Imdra. <laughs> Who is like not wanting to be part of this. And she's just like, <laughs> looks away then, from you. Yep. And I'm going to try to look through Krufiel's eyes. Uh, yeah, so you, uh, you, you, that's part of the feature, right? Because I told you, yeah, yeah it's how, part of finding Yeah, so the, you would, how many fingers am I holding up? You would spend an action, and then suddenly you, you no longer see and hear from yourself, but you are I, now. I think Imdra would see my eyes just go completely black. Also, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, she's she's <laughs> super, she's super not into this. I hate it, and she. She's actually going to, she had been trying to keep Luca uh, in line, but she's back over in the corner, like seriously in the corner now. Um, and, and yeah, you, you are now perceiving through Krufiel's eyes and ears. Flynn, it's, it's, it's three. I could, why? I didn't yes, know I could do yes. this. Very good, man. It is three, Master. You, you, you got it very good. Anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt, Velen. I was, uh, that's, that's very exciting to, to know. Hmm. Done, then, are we? Yeah. Okay, sure. good. Go ahead. I've had Patch. Ah, ah fuckers. Um, running search patterns and looking for traces of either the Mercs or the Durgar. And I found one of them. Which one? A trace or a Durgar? A couple of miles out from town to the west toward Bremen. There's some sort of stone edifice or a, a, a shrine, maybe. Um, it seems like all the mercs are, are camped around that. Uh, maybe they were running combat drills or... Uh, Patch didn't really know, but what I could see from his memory, it, it seemed as though they were running drills. Did this stone edifice have a bowl of some sort in its hands? She's gonna, <clears throat> she's gonna pop her fingers, and her owl will will appear, and she will kind of like the professor of the crew feel. She'll she'll. She'll close her eye and kind of think for just a moment as though she's kind of communing with, with Patch. Um, yeah, maybe maybe a, a marble, a white marble bowl. <laughs> okay. Um, the mercs might not be a problem for us if they don't know to make an offering. Um, an offering, son? What, what is this? So we took that road coming into town, right? Uh, if that's the same stone figure that we passed coming in, into town, uh, it has a bowl with ice in it, um, and you're to place something on that as an offering, I guess, to Oriel or whatever is out there. And it's got to be the right kind of offering, because if it's not, cold white walkers will come out and kill. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, yeah, she will actually take a piece of paper and sketch it for you. And it, it for sure looks like the same. It's a little dais and then six columns around it, arranged around. It looks a little like a snowflake. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and like, yep, 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 yep. Yeah, Flynn uh, and Professor, you both a hundo P recognize that. I mean, maybe if they leave it alone, they'll be all right. But if uh, if a proper offering isn't made into that, they'll probably be wiped out by cold white walkers. Well, I mean, even even mercs can can get lucky sometimes. Do you not think they can defeat a cold light walker? 
Uh, it less, depends on how many Oriole sends, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, if it's proportionate to the group size. Mm. Well, I don't know if that's good or bad news that I've brought you, but um, I think I will uh, will we'll go back out and uh, keep an eye on things. <laughs> ah, see, you get it. You get it. Because yeah, I've got. No, I just got it. Because Patch is the owl. Was yeah. That one. I. Thank um, <laughs> I will, uh, I'll, I'll keep watch around the city and, uh, I will, I will let you know if, if things change Thank and you. she will, um, Grando will nod and she will head back out the door, not stompingly like the other guys. So apparently it is possible <laughs> to walk out without stomping your feet around. So it sounds like the mercs are out. Yeah. Unless they're smart. And let's be honest, they're they're mercs. Probably not smarts. Yeah, but mercs are often led by somebody who is smart. So if if they have someone that has kept them together, it could be that that there is brains at the top of that of that structure. If we sent someone to warn them, would it benefit us at all? If we could perhaps bring them back? Or should we just let that play out? You could mm. warn them and tell them that there's pay here. Would you warn them or would you invite them? There is a difference. Both? Warn them of, of the... Like, hey, don't touch that, but also if you come back, we could pay you? Yeah. Okay. Well, that would work for rank and file soldiers, probably. But again, if, if they're being led by someone, if they're being led by luck. someone, why would they gather just outside of a couple of miles outside of town unless they and mean if, to come back? They've had all night to get away from here. And if they're running drills, they are being led by someone. I hate to think about people have been just killed by those cold light walkers, but if it evens the playing field for us, maybe it's not the worst of ideas. Uh, yeah. Ah, you well. think prudence is with them? Oh, that's a real good qu Oh, that's an excellent question. Yeah. Is she, do we, do we believe that she is still oh. the, leader, the leadership that, uh, that they're under? I, 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 Flynn, she will look at you, Andrew will look at you, Flynn. I'm, uh, I don't know. Um, maybe not, but I don't know. Flynn? Uh, it, uh, Prudence might also be heading, well, pot. I, I slide the, the letter over to the professor. Uh, Prudence might also be heading towards East Haven, or Jess oh, could be trying to... Sorry, you need that text, don't you? Are you going to read it out loud, or are you just going to read it to yourself? I will uh, read it out loud. All right, then I will just read it. Um, uh, because you didn't, you didn't read it out loud before, did you, Flynn? No, I didn't. So the letter that the professor reads, this is the letter that Imdra got from the little boy earlier. <clears throat> it says, M... I didn't think you would be so fierce last night. You made me realize that maybe I made a mistake. I am headed for East Haven, should you wish to follow me. Prue. Man, can you insight check through a letter? <laughs> Negative. <laughs> I can't tell by the way this little F is scrolled on the, on the paper. <laughs> I love she where you think East Haven in a way that she like meant in she was going in the opposite direction. She wrote East Haven, but she was looking west when she wrote it. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, no. It sounds like we either A. Need to go get these mercenaries right now. T 
tell the people we're going to get fucked over tonight. So women and children to the boats or wherever we want them to go. And then we get ready for either A, have a lot of people die, kill a lot of fucking Drugar, whatever, you know. Or we all just go hide out in the fucking boats. That makes sense? That makes yes. sense. I'm well, going to look up at Indra. Oh, you're <laughs> over in the corner still. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> What if those? What if the the mercs out there are the cleanup crew? You know, if if Prudence, you know, knows that the Durgar are, are going to come back here to come for payment that's not fully here, and just going to send in the mercs to you know clean up after the Durgar are done, getting the rank and file ones here to fight out a day or two might buy us one some hands and two just a little bit of time and also they might maybe they die uh during the dark attack they die honorably and with sense of purpose and with yes yeah, which is exactly what them. what M- mercs want is to be honorably dead with no yep. money in their pocket well, you know what? You can pay a dead man by putting two coins on his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what would be the purpose of that? So I, I just, I just want to let you guys know that I've discovered that I don't have to split the party. I can just split the shit show objectives and make yep. you choose between them. Yep. Ex- excellent. Great. W- without really knowing how that's going to play out. So you guys are you're starting to kind of kind of circle the drain here on stuff. So either we need to solidify into a plan or we can leave it a little bit nebulous and we can just advance the timeline a little. Cuz you're not going to like not get to the the crux of things between this week and next week by sitting here discussing it. We ain't going to do 6 hours of town hall chat. The city yeah. <laughs> will burn around you if we do that. I mean, we don't have a better plan other than try to defend as best we can and wait for the Durgar to show up. Uh, yeah, I'm for that. They're they're the problem that we know is coming. So, uh, I'm I'm for tell the townspeople what's going on and get them ready for um that dark episode of Game of Thrones. <laughs> The, How do we just the red wedding? Chardolin. No, no, the if, other one. If we if we don't want the Durgar to get the Chardolin, and I don't really want to carry the Chardolin around, what do we do with it? Can we freeze destroy it? it? Throw, it in, throw it in the lake and let it freeze. I would. Mm, uh, so I can reach it down there, though. Yeah. So the the, uh, lake. the the two thoughts that I have that are, if we if we try to blow it up, it might amplify whatever we try to destroy it with and might take a whole town or more with it. If we put it in the lake, we still fish in those lakes. We still depend on them for our survival, the whole ten town survival. And if the fish eat the startling and come up with it. I say even even touching it sometimes is enough to to have an effect. Lo Luke Just, has got something. I got I got an epiphany. If it's going to amplify whatever we try and burn it, melt it, explode it with, we give them the bag, we set a timer, and boom goes the Drugar. Ah? Ah. Did you just change boom goes the dynamite into boom goes the Durgar? Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Boom goes the Durgar. All right. Well, I mean, we could possibly use it. We could use a deception, just... um, put a bomb in and then put rocks around it. I could maybe magic some precipitation sort of thing so that they, it looks like it's Chardolin and, and then, you know, boom goes the Durgar later. I don't know. We might be able to combine all these plans. Yeah. Instead of bags of rocks, make bags of bombs or explosives or alcohol. We put one or two bags of Chardolin on top so that when they check it, it looks like Chardolin. And as they walk off, 
we we set we set off the we set it we we blow them all. Ma will lean forward. It, I I can't tell you how how lucky we are to to have such resourceful people here who 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 not only know how to craft explosives but who carry all the needed things to craft the explosives with them. I mean, I and she will she will one at a time eye through all of you. Uh, oh, no. Oh, none of it. We're we're a fishing village. We don't we don't make we don't make bombs, sweeties. We make boats. Well, we make boats. We make rods and reels. We catch the fish. But we have we, alcohol. If you got animals for 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 dung, and you got I also have a couple of flasks of alchemist fire, which would help get things started. And like cording is enough to make her long enough fuse to. To, to make a timed bomb. Yeah. Well, I say we have alcohol and oil. I've got alchemist fire. And if what we've heard about the Chardolin is true, if we get it, if we get it burning, it, the Chardolin might take over. Mm, think about that, Professor. That 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 wasn't exactly what he said. He was worried that if we use a magic of some kind. To blow it up, it would amplify the magic, and oh, well, <coughs> fire is I not <laughs> fire is not magic. What if it's from a fireball? That's an interesting question. Um, <laughs> I, I will also say that as Justin will kind of look at all of you. So the Durgar are stupid, but they're not going to take a bag with a lighted fuse issuing smoke and quickly move away from us. I look at um, both Flynn and the professor and say kind of softly, I could ask him. No, no, no. absolutely not. No, no, hard no. Who, 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 no, who are you no, talking no, no. about, dear? We're not who talking is, about it because he's invoking the name is going to get us into too much trouble. You, I have, uh, we have you never resources. been speaking before, have you, son? Zip it. Yes, I please. have a, I no! have a res, I have a resource that could potentially help us with getting more armed people here. And what might this resource be that Flynn and the professor are so dead set against? What's the cost? <laughs> the cost wouldn't be to you. The cost is on me. Nah, you're we smarter. We don't necessarily you're, know that's true. Cost you're, you're smarter than that, lass. The cost is never just on one person. If we benefit from it, then the cost will be on us as well. But benefiting from you, we'll have to pay all of you. It won't just be me paying. If we have well, suddenly an army show up, we'll have to, we'll have to pay let, somehow. Let's just say it's kind of a deal with the devil. Hmm. I don't know that we're quite quite there yet, but uh, I also won't I, say I won't I won't say to to kick it out of bed because in the eleventh hour, if things go dire, not even then, not even then. <laughs> I will I will I will stand at the front of the gates of this town, meet the rear guard myself, and fight him to the death before I will knowingly ask them for anything. Flynn, make a gosh, I don't even know what I, I need a character sheet. What, <laughs> what what do I want? Make a history check. Make a wisdom saving throw, Flynn. Uh, I hate that wisdom. <laughs> oh ho! Thank you, baby. That's a natty twenty. All oh, right. For a moment, you feel like someone is trying to say something, but you don't see anyone in here talking and you didn't hear anything. But I would Fine. say that even with a 20, maybe especially with a 20, you would know.
Here, I'll, I'll send it to you in back chat. I like, like, I if I if I could turn a voice inward, and uh, be like, uh, never. Um. Ha! <laughs> uh, okay. The, just know I'm writing this down. This will this will come back again. You won't always have a natural twenty on your on your wisdom save. No, I won't. But <laughs> but for this time, you sure nailed it. Um. Can I flavor that a little bit? <laughs> Uh, have flavor that how? Uh, oh, oh, in what in your reply? Or like in my like like what have like like in my like the. Yeah no yeah I, I I think it I think it gets through quite spicy and clearly enough. I don't know that you need to put any more flavor town on it, but uh, okay. if <laughs> if there's something you specifically want to do, you can. Well, because like this has been like a, like uh like before like when Ryan has tried to like take my mind or something. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always like the three-eyed wolf that is like the source of my psychic ability is like prowling on the edge of like my mindscape and like no no not in here mm -hmm. not in here this is mine you can't come in here all right I'll buy that um yeah so it, it, there's there's no other no other press at the moment um I'll stand out there myself and fight him but I'm not asking alright may not be up to you in the end I mean ironically yes it it might bring <laughs> aid but it if all of the black swords wear that same medallion it would also bring a significant amount of Shardalin possibly into the Durgar's hands understood alright Hold on, I'm uh I still think load up a cart with anything flammable we can find and fireball it as they as they walk out is the best uh the best chance we got. I mean at the Take very some island, throw some sh blow some shit up. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's do it. Fireball. At the very least, even if it doesn't, like, destroy them, like, if we can get them off our backs for just a minute to get them off, I mean, we might be able to catch them by surprise, is all I mean, and as they're leaving town instead of coming into it. Okay. So then... This is Buddy the DM. Tell me what the plan is. Um, I need to send someone down to the docks and look out for a sea monster that might be on its way. <laughs> that's that's everyone at the table laughing. Um, see, I just say uh, that. I, just say that out loud. Just non sequitur. Sea to monster. Everyone in the okay. Room. Uh, what what color of sea monster? We we have so many that show up around here. I don't like, remember. Its name like, is. Freddy. Kind of like, like, oh, Freddy. And like, like slick skin. Freddy the sea monster. Uh, <laughs> yeah, normally he, he haunts the shores around Bremen, but I've asked him to come by in case we could use his assistance. Uh, Lieutenant, and he'll look at Lieutenant Miach Miat Shield. Um, can you, can you, can you spare someone to send him down to the ice dock to, to look for a, <laughs> for a sea monster named Freddy? Bring some cheese. Or some fish. Yeah. He speaks. Mm. He speaks common. Um, mm. And bring, he bringing cheese and fish, and he speaks common. Uh, and me at shield will kind of uh, yeah yes sir. He's wondering if he's done something wrong to get this assignment, and uh, he will he will head out uh, to go find someone to send to the ice dock for you, professor. <laughs> I'd hate for Freddy to get there, and there's there's no one. I uh, I invited him. He should have someone to. to... Aww. <laughs> he would think I I don't want him to think I've stood him up. Oh. Okay. 
All right. So, um, I think, well, we got to take care of the Durgar problem. So the question is, do we just, do we leave the Shardlin out in front of the town, have them come and collect it, hit them with a the fireball as they're, as they're running off, leaving off with it, and then uh, scab out the, the, the stragglers? Or do we have the Shardlin in town, have them come into it over the edge of the ice, and then have it out with them there, and hopefully Freddy can give us some support? Uh, I don't know if I want to drop them into the ice. It'd be great. It'd be, I mean, if we could get the Durgar in the ice, it'd be great. But then I don't necessarily want the Shardolin in there. All right, so we I'd... pop them outside of town. Yeah. Well, so uh, how many uh, how many Durgar are, are, are coming? I mean, you. The, uh, it seems as it... though that the 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 four, the four of you. I'm sorry, the five of you can. Can easily whip ass on on all of the Durgar on the land, even with our our fifty remaining guards. But uh, how many are coming? Are is it is it ten? Is it is it fifty? Is it we is it a no thousand? Idea. You are thinking too far ahead. We are mm, like the, the enough son. to burn the town is what they promised. That's what they said. Yeah, um, son. I'm I'm sorry, but I, I don't know that that's thinking too far ahead. If it's a thousand of them that show up. Uh, it's going to be we, a bloodbath. Well, I, I'm going to be a little blunt here. What do you want from us then? Because we don't have the means to, to either take on an, an army or or to, to like plan out a whole fucking siege. All right. We have we a problem to deal with today. All right. So I'm I'm thinking we, we take care of the ones that come into town now, follow this re the rest of the stragglers out of town and take and figure out where they'll hold up. Or you bring them into town and take them out that way. You've been alive over 100,000 years, man, all right? So bring something to the table or stop shooting down everybody else's ideas. Or have you ever been speaker of a town before? <laughs> oh, oh, damn. Grand Grendel will stand up. Harbingers, thank you for coming. But that will be all for now. I leave. I just get up and leave. <laughs> I, I I turn to them and um and say let me know if you change your mind about what I have offered. Thank you. We're uh, we're just here to help. All right. Um Indra's gonna move to the door and then look back at the professor and Luca. Um, I, yes. Do, do you want me to go with them or you want me to stay? Because technically I just met them last night. I think I'd like you to go. Okay. Remember the bounty idea. It's a great idea. Mm. Remember the bounties. And then in Lucas' mind, he's going to be like, I'm going to get fucking paid if we stay. <laughs> <laughs> And now all eyes, Professor, are on you. Even Indra's eye. Yeah, yes, what? I'm sorry, I said we were done with you. Are we leaving? Yeah, like, all your crew is gone. Indra's at the door, like... Leo. <laughs> I've just been, like... Curfio, why didn't you say anything? Uh, yeah, you asked me to not interrupt you, sir. Master. Uh, let's go. Uh, yeah, so y'all can, uh, y'all will step back out into the, uh, into the hall, and, uh, Guard will come out with you, but will shut the door behind you. Except for that little sliver there. Well, Indra says, that could have gone better. This has gone about as well as every other time we've got to meet with a speaker to talk about defending their town, Imdra. They're not the speakers, Flynn. They're an they emergency are the council. They're in charge. They are an emergency council trying to figure out what's best for the town. They weren't here to see the Durgar. They didn't hear the deal, he said. I agree with you. I agree with you that we have to face 
We have to face the threat. But he is right that if there's a thousand of them, not even we can stem the tide of that. So, your plan from earlier about getting people who can't fight onto ships away from the melee, I think is a good plan. Whether they agree or not, I, I don't know, but there will come a time where we either agree with them or we do what's best for the city no, and we, for the no, people. No, we get through tonight and then we leave. Hmm. Whatever that means. I, uh... I can't say that I'm happy to hear that again. And she will fucking dead-ass stalk away from you guys and down the stairs. And you see her cross and you hear the door slam. Not slam, but aggressively shut behind her. You sound <clears throat> like Hull fast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could, like, I'm just throwing this out there. We could just, if the train gets tough, we can either run or, you know, just fucking kill everything around us. You know, it, it's kind of an either or option at this point in time. Or we can just leave right now. I mean, it, I'm not leaving right now. All right. If it comes to it, I'll like, I, I'm not, I'm not responsible for this mess, but I did have a hand of it getting, getting this deep into it. All right. So send out the people, send out, send away the people that can't fight, do what we can. I don't know. I'll do, I'm going to do what I can with my own two hands. And if that means, Standing at the gate of this town with the bag of Chardolin, um talking down uh, army of Durgar uh, to hold him off from this town for one more day, and it kills me, then that's what that and that's just what that's gonna be. You're muted, Delana. I said, or we could enlist an army. I can't pay that. Haven't you already said once before? Said yes once before. There we go. I got uh I got Imdra to stop wreaking havoc on an entire room. Levi had a hold of Indra. I told him we need like just to, to to let her go. He did. He still wants Dur he still wants Durgar blood. So let's fucking give him some Durgar blood. Exactly. No, I'm not, but I'm not talking about enlisting more help. I like I'll I'll stand out there and take down as many as I can. If there's guards out there that's going to stand with me, so so be it, but... All right. All I'm saying is Levistus wants Durgar blood, so he would be more than eager to help. I'd rather not. Uh, what? what? At a certain what point, it's about? at a certain point, it's going to be between saving all of these people and what your feelings are. Oh, and I'm no. more willing to save these people. It's no, it'll be between saving these people and we would save their lives only to bind their souls. I know my price, and that's too high. Uh, do you want to go loop me in on this shit? I... There's a frozen devil that's got its hands in our group. Oh, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and let y'all have this conversation by yourself because I I'm gonna say no. Just so you know, my vote is no on whatever soul finding bullshit we got going on here. 
I've already got enough of that bullshit to deal with. I ain't dealing with it today. Mm-mm, hell no. And I'm gonna leave. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the conversation now. <laughs> I I do think this is a conversation we should have with uh with Delphi as well, I think. I think this is something that uh, when we have less pressing matters, we do need to discuss. It, yeah, I am. we can discuss it with Delphi. Delphi trusts Levi emphatically because she can't see who he is. Not comforting. You got to see that. I know it's not comforting. <sighs> Gu- Guard is kind of looking at all of you like, um, should we maybe go downstairs now? Yep. We got. Yeah, let's go. Gotta tell a bunch of town yeah. people their town's about to get destroyed. Yeah, that. Uh, okay, so why don't you guys tell me what you'd like to get into? Um, switching you guys. I'm gonna say that you have um, you've gone back to the the downstairs map. You're all. Kind of in this lobby area together, you can see one of the doors is ajar and Imdra is pacing out front. Wait, can we sneak by her? She she is not very fun. I'm, I'm going to be honest, but I know if I stab her, she's going to lob my head off. <laughs> <laughs> There's no if or here. It is, I stab her, I die. And it really seems like she's the one. Flynn, close your ears. They're both the ones keeping us here right now. We can just. All right. So what do you want to do? Do you want to try making some bombs um, or figure out how to light unknown amounts of Durgar on fire? Are you asking me? Because I don't know how to make those things. I'm asking my party. Okay, I'll come out over here then. We need to get. Hmm. I... <laughs> like the ultimate loner, Luca. <laughs> like, I got kicked out of the party. I want to go smoke my pipe sadly again. Oh. I, don't, I don't know that she I kicked you out. I didn't, I, say, I didn't say that. I just. She's looking for a group decision, not an individual decision. Um. Imdra will will come over and just make small talk with you, Luca. And it's it is awkward but not overly unpleasant. Do you um, want to smoke? Uh, oh no, no, thank you. I uh, it's, it's my throat is kind of. Um, but thank you. It smells very nice. Um, so the three of you. Pine. Ins- <laughs> Do what now? <laughs> it's pine. Great for mm, the throat. It's and God. This it smells very <laughs> sappy. Um, uh, the three of you inside. Um, look. Should we? we should, should we find Velen and see if she would at least be able to? If she would be on board with launching a fireball, because yeah. if she's not, if she won't agree to it, then this is a a, a moot a point moot anyway. Point. Yeah. Uh. I don't know. Look, I, I can look. I can do this, and I create a little ball of fire in my hand, <laughs> uh, but that's about it. 
I mean, I have God for just under- a second. I thought that that Everdars was hitting a fucking bong over there. It's like, what are you and Imdra doing out there? <laughs> I, I looked up and it's just like this. Like, I know how Twitch works. Uh uh-uh. uh. Um, no. Uh, right, okay, it's okay. medical. All right, let's look. I look. I'm suddenly very gun shy about telling anybody in this town what to do. Um, maybe suggest Cecilia to get the word out to get people who can't fight out of town and anyone who can lift a sword or knows some, knows a thing or two that can help defend the town meet us over at the wolf Cove or something. I don't know. I'm not making friends here today. Uh, so it seems. I will, I will say that as you say that out loud, uh, like Celia is not paying you guys much of attention, but like you notice Guard listening to you, and he and he looks at you, Flynn, and nods, and then he heads out the front door, and you see him walk to you don't exactly know where, but he he was clearly in in earshot of of what you were saying. Should we should we find Velen? Uh, yeah. She packs a good punch. We're gonna need her. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Shall I, shall I look for her, sir? Uh, yeah. She's probably running more patrols with Patch. So if you see Patch flying around. Because <laughs> she only has... It's <laughs> yeah. It's very, 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 master is very, very funny. Very funny, master. Do you want? Do you want a silly name? Also, I could name uh, you Arm or something like that. The hand of the professor. <laughs> you could be like. You could be like my left. My left. I hand, am my left hand man. And he flies up and kind of like full wings, and he goes, "I am Krufiel, the professor's hand." <laughs> And then he has, and he goes I mean, like he I goes mean, straight. I was joking, Crucio, but to be he honest, goes like, straight kind of toward like the it. door <laughs> and just kind of just kind of faces into it. Uh, uh, he's still not good with doors. He then kind of flies down and opens the door, and you hear the two guards outside. Like, oh, holy shit! And then is oh no, it, it, everything's fine. I am I am Crucio, the professor's hand. And then you see him fly away. Well, that's the best thing I've seen today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, just... being on this side, I man, she's totally onto something that feels nice. It feels, it feels right. <laughs> yes. Um, <sighs> well, if that's all we got to do until... Uh, we'll say... Are, are yeah, we'll, we'll say we're the, the kind of... Between all that talk and stuff, it's it's a little after lunchtime. It's it's maybe maybe one one ish so you know it's probably probably five hours until the the sacrifice would want to be and probably a, another five hours after that that the uh maybe six hours after that that the the supposed deal would take place so oh geez did we even solve the sacrifice deal are we no. ignoring the sacrifice I, it, I i i don't know um it's not solved Council will figure something out, probably. Yeah, I, I guess that I guess that's their job now. I'm gonna go knock my head up against the wall, uh, because that's what we've been doing all morning. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Is yeah. that code for you're gonna go find Terrace? What's what's that? No, mean? no, no. <laughs> mm. Um all right, so where are you guys headed? Do you wanna go have a drink and kind of simmer down a little bit? Yeah, let's head back to the wolf pelt. Until we can figure out where uh, Velen is. Okay. Uh, so you guys head back over, and um, the uh, yeah, Delphina is definitely feeling a little better. Um, she and Josie and the girls have uh, have set up. I mean, Flynn, you have seen some. Um, like some combat triage stations before and they've they've set up actually one that doesn't look bad um they've they've done they've done good work in in the short couple hours you've been gone uh you guys come in and the and Josie and Theo round 
Hey, oh, well, how, uh, how, did it, how did things go? I walk to the bar and immediately, like, slam my head onto the bar. <laughs> oh. <sighs> not, not well. And so uh, she'll, she'll pull down two different liquors for you to choose from, and then she'll just set, like, you know how bartenders grab, like, ten fingers of shot glasses and put them <laughs> up? She'll just do, yeah. like, she'll just do, like, ten fingers of glasses and put them on the bar. Okay, what's what's the problem? Uh, well, we don't have a plan. Mm, you, you, you ever worked with a speaker before? That's pretty par for the course, <laughs> even for a goddamn gaggle of them. Like, no, we've never uh... been speakers before. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You, have you ever worked with speakers before? Uh, uh, yeah, we unfortunately, get it. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, we, we have. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it's gone pretty much beat for beat the exact same way. Yep, politics. Yeah, I mean, at least that means that uh, the situation is not extraordinary. Mm. <laughs> and she, she, she says that she's like. Mm. <laughs> so, what? What? You, she looks around. It's, it's just, it's you guys. It's their daughters. It's Delphi. Um, there's nobody in here. Even though in the soundtrack you can hear a little bit of talking. Um, <laughs> it's just the backing track, man. Um, so, regardless of what they think, what are you going to do? Because we're with you. Uh, well, so far, the best idea we have is to try to trick the Durgar into taking a wagon full of some Shardolin and then try to blow them up. It's not I mean, a solid plan. Well, uh, maybe not, but if, if you can if you can pull it off, it would um, maybe, if nothing else, be a deterrent. I mean, if, if you could take out a, a large chunk of them, that certainly could deter the rest. It, it may mean they come back more angry later, but for now, it could certainly deter them off for days or even weeks. But that means that when they come back, they're going to come back with a vengeance. Yes, but we will have time. Time will be on our side to prepare for them. Touché. If they leave, we must prepare. So we, we will if at least leave, know our. If they leave, we must be prepared to, to follow them or have someone follow them. Kruf, Krufiel, are you around? Kruf, Krufiel. He's not. You sent him to find Valin. Damn it! <laughs> you, could, you could poof him out and then re poof him next to you. But he has not. No, he's on a job. Yeah, he's maybe not just completed his mission yet. Um, the um, the 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 council doesn't. They don't want to attack. They want to know specifics. They want to know how many Durg are. They want to know who to send out. They want to know what's gonna happen. Uh, uh, Flynn, as you're saying all of that, you're you're remembering commanders, even good commanders that you have worked for in the past and how many times you've gotten in trouble doing the right thing when they were when they wanted more information and so they were they were trying to, to do the diligence and you were trusting your gut and you over your career have paid the price for it several times but you, you're definitely getting that feeling again so I, I would say that you <clears throat> You were you started off very angry and frustrated, but I think that the more you think about it and having a little bit of drink and a time to breathe, in some ways this feels right because it's what you've built your whole career on. That's what I would say. That's my two cents. You you, you are are welcome to disagree since I mean Flynn Flynn is yours, but I just I would point that out that knowing some of your backstory this is this is fit and Flynn like a glove. Yeah. <laughs> you like taking medals and shit off. You're like about to lose this one and <laughs> this one. Um, that's fitting. So like 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 uh, Flynn will take the swords off of his belt. Um, swords that are because because Flynn's order works with sword and shield. He carries two rapiers because he decided to stay and fight with a, not an enemy faction, but a faction that did not align themselves with him because he thought it was the right thing to do. Friends paid the price, 
and he carries these swords as a reminder. So he's looking at these swords on the bar. I'm telling you what I'm going to do, Jules. I'm going to try and get as many people out of this town as I can, and I will stand at the gates to this town, wait for those Durgar to show up, and do what I can to get this town through tonight. I can't promise I'll be here when they come back, but I can promise that uh, either this town stands tomorrow or I go down with it. You hear Terrace in the back. Oh, yeah. Not now, Terrace. God damn it. She, <laughs> she, she, will, she will look at you and she'll say, no, we'll get the people that need to get to safety to safety. You take the ones that want to fight and make them ready. We'll, we'll, where should we, should we, should we bring them here? Should we put them, should we break into the town hall and stash them there? Um, where should we put the people to keep them safe? Br bring them here. Uh, not to, not to volunteer your place, but, um, and Theo like will, Theo will step in. I told you this building has been in my family for over a hundred years. It's made of strong stuff. Like not, you know, not, not knowing anything, but like this feels better than being held up in a town hall that's been you know, breached before and yeah. is honestly not my favorite place to be right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. If, so if we'll bring, we'll bring yeah, people and here. If, and if whatever guards can bring whatever gear they got, bring it here and we'll plan something. I don't know. She will make sure that all of you have a, a drink in front of you and she will raise her glass. Then I say, to Targos and to the Harbingers. To Targos. To Targos. And the Harbingers. And then she will she and Theo will knock theirs back. You guys you, you have your drink. You start making a little bit of a plan of uh, oh we'll move we'll take these tables and, and we'll maybe board up the windows and you guys kind of talk through that stuff and um Crufiel returns with Valin. Um I I I thought you were over at the at, at the town hall. I, I just there's been We got kicked out. <laughs> oh surprise, right. surprise. Yeah that yeah yeah that makes sense. Um uh, there's there's been a development with okay. the Mercs. Yes. The I, I don't. Uh, after I spoke with you, and then I I, I went and uh, back to the 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 guard tower that I was sitting on to 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 kind of send Patch out and and look at things, and oh, when Patch went back out there, it was just, gosh, he said maybe a, a two mile blizzard. Uh, just he couldn't he see through it as he got near it. He he was just buffeted around and, and battered down, but it it's seemingly right where right where they all were. I, 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 I've never seen a, a localized blizzard. What, what what does it mean? Well, it, it means the mercs likely angered Oriel, as we were hoping they would. And uh, apparently for a larger group, she sends more than cold, wet, cold light wa walkers. Man, that's the a terrible hard word to say. <laughs> oh, oh my god, you guys! It's, it's White Claw walkers. My god, god. it's White Claw. Um, and Theo, <laughs> Theo will chime in. Uh, he's he's has brought some some snacks over because it it is you know just like I said just after lunchtime. Even though you guys just got up at like ten o'clock. Um, the. Uh, well, that actually also works in our favor that if the Frost Maiden is focused on retribution to the west of us, she may not even notice if we don't do the silly, non-useful sacrifice. She might not know. Or maybe a case could be made that she got all of them. It's beneficial. That's at least a little bit of a bright point for us. Sure. Uh, has has there ever not been a sacrifice to Uriel? Um, 
not since we started. Uh, I mean, this is, gosh, this is a little over two years this has been happening, and the sacrifices, God, I don't know, for over a year, but, but not not for the not for the entirety of the rhyme and mm. it's i mean one could easily say that the rhyme has only gotten worse it's it never gets any better so perhaps the sacrifices anger her i, I was know, just she's, wondering if there's kind of bitch, any way so. we could tell if she was angry or not like oh does she normally accept a sacrifice I think professor she she's care? always I think she's always angry. Yeah, then what's the point? <laughs> yeah. That's what a lot of us here and in Brinchander and in East Haven believe. Uh and in fact all the ten towns, but especially those three that have the unfortunate human sacrifices. All right. All yeah. right, well. It's so, real. She gets nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, nah, that's that one's okay, but it's not a great title. Screw or real, she gets nothing. <laughs> um, and so Valen will see that you're all having a drink in the middle of the day and have a drink herself. Um, oh, so yes. uh, you got kicked out of the town hall. So are we leaving? Is there a plan? What is happening? Um, how do you feel about fireballs? I love it. It's my favorite spell. We were hoping um, you'd say that. Yeah. Even though uh, it's not in my, my primary school, it is absolutely one of my favorites. So, if we were to leave a card out for the Durgar to inspect that may be full of some volatile material. Go on. Uh, we just need you to Light it. Easy enough. What what volatile material? It, it's the chardolin. Chardolin. It's kind of like killing two birds with one stone, except one of the birds is a whole fuck ton of Durgar. <laughs> will, will the chardolin actually be destroyed when, the, um, when we blow it up? That would well, be the hope, yeah. Uh, so you're talking about just casting fireball on it. I mean, that... Uh, that's not exactly how the magic it, it, you could take a piece say and cast fireball into it and then you throw and shatter that piece and the the, the fireball would 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 go off but just simply casting fireball onto a cart of it would not would not and she's looking at all of you as you're all looking at her just like you're looking at me on the zoom window she's looking at you in turn like what the fuck is wrong with y'all? It's not exactly it. If we just, it's like putting uh -huh, just a match uh -huh. on yep. a plank. But if you put it in the chardolin, and then put the chardolin in the bag. Oh, we're on different ideas, Flynn. I was gonna use that as an <laughs> arrow tips and shoot, <laughs> shoot that shit into the middle of them as they charge. E us. Either either but way, we use the. I, the, the I kind of like both of those. Um, you, using the charged chardolin yeah. as the catalyst to blow the rest of it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Hmm. It's kind of inspired. I could, I could burn the spell slots that I have, and then if someone else has magic and could maybe cast a shatter. I would think that yeah. would set all of them, if they were in proximity together, I think that would set all of them off. I have Shatter. I can Shatter shit. Folks, that's what I like to call a plan fucking A, all right? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds great. I got uh, Thunderwave, I mean, Shatter. The, <laughs> the, Theo, <laughs> takes, Theo takes one of the bottles off and like <laughs> climbs up and pulls one off the highest shelf. And like dust it off, and and you can tell this bottle, this is an old bottle, and there's like a little bit of, kind of gold gilding, on the bottle itself. And he sets and he sets that down on the bar, in front of everyone. I think that calls, for a plan fucking a drink. Ooh, yes. And he'll and he'll uncork that and start pouring that one into new glasses because you can't you know mess up you know a good whiskey no, and a bad no, whiskey yeah. glass <laughs> <clears throat> um 
And yeah, this is maybe some of the finest whiskey any of you have ever tasted. It is it is exceptional. Smooth. Um hurts my throat. <laughs> uh, you know what? It, it's like only for a moment and then it's it's smooth like a pine tree pipe tobacco. Mm. Somehow. Mm. Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, and cut. Um, the <laughs> smooth like pine tree pipe tobacco. Um, uh, okay, so I will um, we'll send the girls out. We'll have them surreptitiously start sending people this way or should we how when will they be here uh, you know what i'm gonna assume tonight. nightfall they don't like the light i'm gonna assume nightfall yeah i mean we have a decent idea yeah i mean we as players don't but as characters i think they gave us an idea yeah well i i did tell you guys like as players just, and characters like just a few minutes ago yeah there was four hours till the sacrifice, then four hours. Oh, to yeah, the yeah. So, uh, that well, so should we, should we, should we gather folks now? I mean, if if the whole town suddenly no. disappears, that's going to be kind gather of suspicious. Them gather them now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, and so she'll uh, she'll tell the girls, and the five of them will uh, will 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 look at all of you, and it's kind of that young commando look, and they're like. We gonna fucking do it, <laughs> and uh, jump and cut to like screams and everything on fire. <laughs> they uh, they they head out the door to to start to start uh, grabbing some folks. Um, as they're headed out, Gaward is headed in. Um, hey, uh, I've put the I've put the word out. Uh, it's circulating through. Um, I don't I don't know that I can have everyone, but I'll. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll get what I can here as soon as they cycle off shift. So, a couple hours. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. No, that should work. work. Yeah. Okay. Any, any word from the docks? Uh, n no, sir, but I will go check. And right. he closes the door behind him. All right. You guys have seemingly put your own plan into motion. Everybody that's working with you seems happy. Maybe <laughs> it's running against the will of the council, but since they weren't coming up with a plan, you know, you guys are doing, you guys are doing what you do. If we ever like found a council that we ran, like that was like, oh yeah, no, we go with this plan. I would probably feel a little bit suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> right though? <laughs> Where are the council now? <laughs> we haven't I, met a functioning government yet. I, uh, Never I, I keep thinking you guys are just going to take a town over. There have been at least three so far that you could yeah. have. Yeah. yeah. Just, that's what I'm saying. We just walk in and like. It's like how to derail the campaign completely. We're the speakers <laughs> now. Um, but it feels like it wouldn't be that hard. They're all so inept. <laughs> mm -hmm. True. True, true, true. Uh, okay, so anything else that you guys want to do to get ready? And what what we'll do is when we pick back up next week, mm -hmm. we will just we'll advance the time clock forward to, you know, Dude. shit shit about to 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 get real. Mm -hmm. Oh, real. So right. shit uh, shit's about to get all real. Oh, no. <laughs> Why would you do it? To me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Okay. About. Um, to get all real. Anything yeah. else you guys want to set in motion for this stream so that we're it's ready to kick next time? So like just checking in with everybody, like broad strokes, we've got our Durgar trap. We've got yep. our first line of defense to the town. Which is our also our second line of defense to the town. We've got um evacuees going. Um, and uh, plan you have some, to... you have some you have some extra muscle that should be coming here in a couple mm -hmm. of hours to see what your plan is, and possibly uh, trailing the Durgar back to their their lair. Oh yeah! Base. Now that now that Krufiel has returned, I'm just gonna let him know that his his job is to if the Durgar try to leave or escape that under any means necessary to track them 
hopefully unnoticed. Very, very good, Master. Very good. I think that's our basis, as far as I can tell. Luca, anything to add to that, to the broad strokes? Uh, no, not really. I, I feel like we're all pretty much on the same page because um, Luca would have done like his looking about all this morning to find various routes that he would have wanted to find. Yeah, and it's, we'll say that you spent a little extra time uh, kind of pointing that out on a napkin drawn map of the city to, to Flynn and talking about you know, maybe some, you know, don't station everybody here. Maybe we kind of split on either side of the gate or something. You guys can come up with some some plans. I'll need you guys to think about those plans before next week and, and let me know kind of how you want this the troops arrayed. Um, Zalvana, anything else to add to the broad strokes? Um, No. I mean, pretty much I just have to make sure that my, my shatter works well. And yeah. I'm here the for um, Imdra will, will look at all of you and Well, not all of you, because all of you weren't there. She'll look at most of you. <clears throat> After the way things went in East Haven, I I thought that you were just just in it for coin and, and didn't care, but I have gravely misjudged you. This this plan is foolish, it is bold, it is inspired, and even if we do not win I will be proud to have gone down with all of you. Oh, no, no terrorists here? No, okay. Um, <laughs> and she, so kind of, kind of the first real meaningful, like there, there's like, she's some, you guys pick up a little bit of heart and soul from Ember on that. Like normally she's very kind of business, business first kind of. Dude. Um, uh, and Delphina, Delphina seems, she seems better. She, she's very worried though. She's worried about y'all's safety. She's worried about the townspeople. She's worried about the fact that you might be walking the precipice to a war. Uh, but she doesn't, she doesn't fight anything that you're saying. She's She's a little bit resigned to it. And I hope Chael agrees with that when I tell her that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was just thinking, I hope, hope you're okay with this plan. <laughs> well, I would say that even though her her goddess is a pacifist, she knows that it is it is expected that you protect friends and family and, and people who can't protect themselves. That, you yeah. know, she, that her, her goddess abhors violence, but understands it is sometimes a, a, a necessary evil. All right. Any, uh, any last rousing words for this week? I got nothing. I can stay tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Well, it'll be later today. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. No, but like, like that's like my final, my, my final words before the smash cut to the battle. It's like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> womp, womp. Eh, after the battle in the morning, I won't bake it in eggs. <laughs> then I'm gonna stab you twice in the morning. Actually, mm -hmm. no, it's three times in the morning if we make it through tomorrow. Three times. I just mouthed off to a whole council of people. Does that not get me back down to two? Josie looks at you. She's like. I haven't seen you stab shit. You talk a lot about stabbing. Jo Josie. <laughs> jo Josie's starting to feel the effects of the midday whiskey that the top shelf, top, top shelf whiskey. She's like, you talk a lot like you couldn't even stab that toast this morning. Like the butter almost <laughs> kicked your ass. I'll stab Flynn in the hand right now. Not the, the we thigh need him. or something. I need my hands for the tonight. I'm not looking good. In between I'm his fingers, then. Okay, good. Well, okay, that's fine. All right, roll an attack. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. What's your AC, Flynn? Uh, 16. Don't crit. Don't crit fail. Ooh! 15. So, that's a 15. 
he uh, he he does go between your fingers, but for sure, like there's there's a nick on either side of them. It's not going to be anything to affect you, but it's just the sheer audacity, Flynn, that he's gonna hit you in one of your fucking sword hands, like that's and and hit and hit two fingers. So maybe that's it's two. two. That that's <laughs> I'm like okay, I count that as two. <laughs> <laughs> Both my hands are fighting hands. That's your two. Good thing I have a third one. <laughs> and put it back in its, in its place. And, and everybody kind of looks at y'all intensely, and then Theo and Josie just burst out laughing. Oh, Delphi, Delphi has managed to get her hands on one of this top top shelf whiskeys and is. Delphi. Like, Ooh, this is way smoother than the other whisk tea. Mm, and she's just Delphi. like. <laughs> She's just like back, back with it. <laughs> Delphi, just one, just one. <laughs> yeah, just one at a time. That's what they said. Oh God, no, <laughs> Delphi. Um, <laughs> gonna miss the whole battle. I know, right? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and I think that is where we're actually going to end the stream for this evening. Uh, 